Okay, good morning. We're here on our uh, criminal docket day, May 2nd. The one thing I would like to, to remind everybody, because I know there's a lot a lot of discussions that are going on between the state and the defense. As a general rule, the courts, uh, this is the final day for pleas to be entered. Of course, defense can always enter a guilty plea, and those are always accepted. But as a general rule, we're going we're gonna to be ending pleas, except in unusual circumstance, we can always uh, take those into consideration. And that's just, quite frankly, for practical reasons, so that everybody can prepare for trial on both sides. And we're not, uh, we're not trying to figure out whether we're pleading or going to trial. So with that, we'll begin with uh, Anderson. attorney is in jury selection right now in Escambia okay, we'll County. We'll she said we... she would be here uh, okay. this afternoon. This afternoon? Or as soon as she gets out of jury selection. Okay. And I'm glad to accommodate lawyers. Please try and let us know in advance so that we can work our docket. So I guess we'll have to come back this afternoon. We'll, we'll handle your case. Your, your attorney is in Jury selection in another case. We'll come back this afternoon? Yes, we'll come back. Gail Gee. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Dees. It's 21 CF 1889. At this time, Your Honor, she's going to withdraw her previous interplea of not guilty tender one of no contest to the court. We have an executed plea and sentence agreement together with a score sheet. May I approach? No. I'll announce the terms if the court would like. And our as, as to count one, she is going to plea to attempted burglary of a conveyance with an assault or battery as charged. Count two will be a lesser included offense, discharging a firearm in public, which is a first degree misdemeanor. It's Florida Statute 790.15 sub one. Count three, she will plead as charged. That's child neglect without great bodily harm. The listed victims in the previous counts of four and five will be moved into count three, is our understanding for sentencing. Counts four and five will be null prost. Count six will be a lesser included offense of simple assault, which is a second degree misdemeanor, maximum of 60 days county jail. That's Florida Statute 784.11. Again, we're asking the court to set it for sentencing, order a pre-sentence investigation, and if the court could accommodate us early August for sentencing. Okay. As the state? state's agreement, we would be dismissing counts four and five. And agreeing to the lesser included. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, very good. Um, Ms. Gee, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Okay, speaking of that mic for me. Um, you heard your attorney and the state um, talk about the terms of your plea agreement. Is that what you're wanting to enter into today? Yes, sir. Okay. I see you've signed the, the plea and sentencing agreement that is here before the court. Is this your signature? Yes, sir. And have you gone over this plea agreement and the terms of the plea agreement with your attorney? Yes, sir. Okay. You understand the legal ramifications. This is a little bit unusual because it's not unusual. It's actually fairly common. But there's not a specific sentence that's being agreed to here today. You understand that. There's a wide range of sentences that are a potential for this. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. And importantly, has anybody promised you any specific thing to get you to enter into this plea other than what's contained in this? No, sir. Okay. Anybody threaten or coerce you to get you to enter into this? No, sir. You understand that by entering this plea here today, <clears throat> you're essentially this will be, other than the sentencing, it will be a final resolution of your underlying claim. We can't come back and say, I don't like that sentence. I'm, I'm, 
I'm disagreeing. I'm, I'm withdrawing that because I didn't get the sentence I thought I was going to get. You understand that this part of the agreement you're agreeing to, and absent fraud and a few other things that your attorney could go over with you, you're not going to be able to change this after today. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Very good. Based upon that, the court will accept your uh, plea and sentencing agreement as stated by counsel with the, the, the changed charges. And <clears throat> so we should come back on a, on a miscellaneous date. How long would you anticipate the, the sentencing? I'd ask for um, at least an hour. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I just didn't know if you had lengthy witnesses. Or I think what? I think an hour would be sufficient. Okay. So we'll just kind of make note of that. Let's see. In in August, um, is August fourth too uh, too soon? That's perfect. And is there, should we, do we need to set a specific um, date for the uh, PSI? Um, if perhaps just we ask the probation officer, July 15th, date kind okay. of in the middle. About a month prior to sentencing. I just want to make sure everybody, I. We'll, we'll put it in today, and okay. I think it gives us 28 days to get it done. Okay, so we'll great. Okay, or, very good. Uh, you said August the 4th. August the 4th, correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Anything else, Mr. Dees, on this case? No, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judge. <laughs> One other thing, Mr. Dees, uh, on the uh, score sheet, uh, you in agreement on the score sheet? Very good. Jackie Mott. Okay, we can skip over. Are you ready on Are you ready on Mott, Mr. Durrell? If If not, I can skip over it if you need to more time. Okay. And your Honor, this is actually going to be a plea to two misdemeanors, so we can just announce if the court wants. Um, but I do have a written plea if you'd like signatures on everything, real quick. Sure. Yeah. Just like we talked about. Thank you. Your Honor, I do have the written plea, if I may approach. You may. Thank you. Thank you. And, Your Honor, at this point, Mr. Mott would uh, withdraw his previously entered plea of not guilty and plead no contest to the lesser included offense of misdemeanor battery. Pursuant to agreement with the state, that is going to be in a uh, sentence of 1129 in the Okaloosa County Jail, and that's to run concurrent with the 18 CF case, Your Honor. Um, in addition, we would stipulate to the court's jurisdiction in the, the domestic violence uh, injunction case. With the understanding what, that that is... What's that case number? Is that uh, the 22MM189? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, again, with the understanding that the sentence will be 1129 Okaloosa County Jail to run concurrent with both the 21 CF and 18 CF cases, Your Honor. Standard fines and costs in both. Very good. Is the state in agreement? Judge Ms. Sandler has informed me that is her agreement. Very good. 
Mr. Ma, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, Your Honor. So you heard your term, your attorney state the terms of the plea agreement? Yes, Your is that Honor. Your, is that your understanding of what the agreement is? Yes, You've Your Honor. You have been able to go over it. I see you signed the, the plea and sentencing agreement here. Have you gone over it? Make sure you got all your questions answered. I know we've, a lot's been going on the last few days, but you feel like you've gotten all your legal questions answered about how this interacts with the other cases, et cetera? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Anybody threaten or coerce you to get you to enter into the plea? No, Your Honor. And you understand that this is a final resolution of these cases? Yes. Based upon that, the court will accept your plea. And uh, as stated by your defense counsel, and the key of which on these two misdemeanor cases are the 1129 to run concurrent with the, each other and with the other 21 CF case. I just need you to do one thing, Mr. Drill, to put a date on this thing. No, that's all right. I just, I, I can't put my, my signature on it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I believe that's all I have, if I may be excused, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Sherry Nichols. Well, Mr. Dell for Sherry Nichols, Your Honor. There's a waiver on file. If we can leave this set for May 26th at 9 a.m. for status. There's no objection, Your Honor. We received some additional re reciprocal discovery from the defense that's very important to the case, and so we should have something by the 26th. Okay. So, we're coming back on the next cycle? All right. When are we Ms. coming Lange's on? May 26th? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll do it a little earlier if that's possible. Okay. Come back May 26th. Thank yes, you, sir. Your Honor. Toomer. Quay, Sean, Toomer. I'm Lisa Ellis for Quayshawn Tumor, 21 CF 1744. Um, this is one we had set a bond hearing last week. If we could set it for the May 26th for a bond hearing. There's no objection to that, Your Honor. We do have some depositions set that are furthering the case on 518 as well. The depositions, you've got depositions on May 18th? Yes, sir. May 15th? May 18th. 18th. Okay. So the 26th is the bond hearing? Yes, sir, if that's yes, acceptable. And then we can come back on, on the uh, pretrial on June 28th, yes, 29th? Yes, sir. It will work, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. David Russell. Your Honor, Sullivan, have. thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dovey. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Brandy Merrifield on behalf of David Russell and 21 CF 2535. Mr. Russell is present. When we were before the court last, Judge, we had scheduled this matter for trial. The state was unavailable at that time. She was at a conference. We have continued to discuss this case and believe that we would like to forward this to the next pretrial conference so that we can continue those discussions. As without objection by the state, Your Honor, Ms. Merrifield and I have been discussing this case. We do have a possible resolution, but we have not locked that down yet. Last continuance? Yes, sir. We both anticipate that, Judge. 6 20, uh, 27. June 27. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. You. That's all I have. Thank you. Let me know. James Clark. Mr. Gates. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Mr. Gates. You announce? Your Honor, before the court is James Clark. James Clark, case number 2021 CF 2531. We're prepared to withdraw our previously entered not guilty plea to a four count information, enter a, a plea of no contest uh, with the understanding that this would be a negotiated plea for a downward departure 
and the sentence would be 24 months state probation, special condition, no trespass at Ronnie's car wash, and a substance abuse evaluation and any, any treatment recommended. May I approach? You may. Is the state in agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you very much. Are you, you're no objection to the score sheet, Mr. Gates? Clark, would you raise your right hand, sir? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir, Your Honor. Okay. So I heard the, uh, your attorney state the terms of your plea agreement. Uh, I see that it's contained also in your plea and sentencing agreement that when you look in the end, which I assume you will have signed, and you have. That's correct. We do need to get the state to sign it. So, um, that's right. <clears throat> so, have you had a chance? I just want to make sure you got a chance to go over this with your attorney. Make sure you got all your legal questions answered. Yes, sir. I have. You, so you reviewed the plea and sentencing agreement with him. Yes, sir. I have. And he, obviously, the key of this is the 24 months of probation. And there's some other costs, etc. I mean, don't realize that you, you know these stay away orders are are. Uh, your responsibility, and they actually are very much adhered to. Do you understand that? Yes, sir, I Could do. affect your ability to revoke this probation. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. You understand that by entering into this plea and sentencing agreement, you're uh, waiving the right to go to a trial, and this will be a final resolution in your case? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. Very good. Based upon that, the court will accept your plea agreement uh, and sentence you to the 24 months uh, Probation. Now, uh, the the twenty four months of probation are are on all four of them, or no, Your Honor. Uh, yeah, no, that, it, how, it would be twenty four months on count one, right. and then eleven twenty nine on count two, <laughs> and three, and six, six months, months on count four, all concurrent. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Cost of supervision waived. Right. Allison Jimerson. Good morning, Your Honor. Michael Gilbert on behalf of Allison Jimerson and 22 CF. 30 and 22 CF 509 defense requests a continuance. We've received a new offer this morning. We can take it out to the next uh, pretrial. No objection, Your Honor. This is the last. This is our last continuance. Any reason for it not? We to believe be? it'll be worked out by then, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Gilbert. I believe so, Your Honor. Okay. So we'll continue to. Uh, 629, June 29. Thank you very much. Andre Clark. Good morning, Your Honor. Ryan Hardy with Andre Clark, 21 CF 894. I'm uh, having some discussions with the state about a possible PTI. Your Honor, I know we did a last continuance on this. We'd like to set it for the miscellaneous date on the 26th for a plea or PTI. State? No objection, Your Honor. Okay. We'll continue to May 26. Your Honor, my next case is Patrick Gundy, 21 CF 3266 and 20 CF 1199. Mr. Gundy is present and approaching. Your Honor, we're going to ask to continue to the next cycle. We're getting Mr. Gundy evaluated for some programs. State. That's correct, Your Honor. No we'll objection. Continue to 627. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank That's you. all I have. Anthony Miles. Is Mr. Henderson here. I saw him at one point. Pardon? I saw Mr. Henderson. Okay, so we'll just we'll pass over it. Kalinowski, Ms. Catalani. Good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Kalinowski. 
Your Honor, Mr. K Mr. William Clay Kalinowski, case two case numbers 21 CF 2335. Your Honor, we have 21 CF 2980. It will be a plea of no contest to both, Your Honor, with the understanding that he would be adjudicated uh, guilty on all counts, serve 60 days in the Okaloosa County Jail, credit for time served, uh, $615 in core costs on, on each case for a total of $1230, $200 cost of prosecution, 100 and 100, and obviously the jail is to run concurrent and not consecutive. May I approach, Your Honor? Right. The state in agreement? That's correct, Your Honor. And is the score sheet in there as I well? I have it, Your Honor. And you're, uh, obviously, not obviously, but you're not, you're in agreement with the score sheet? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. This is also... I, I don't know. Okay. I, I assume if he served that, then he'll just be. Uh, Very well. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Kalinowski, would you raise your right hand, sir? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. <coughs> yes, sir. You heard your attorney state the terms of your plea agreement. Is that what you're agreeing to? Yes, sir. I see you've got the plea and sentencing agreement you signed at the end. Have you gone over this? Yes, sir. With all of your, uh, all the details of it, legal ramifications. You can sir. put your, you can put your hand down. You're, you've, uh, you're waiving the right to go to a trial on all these cases. You understand that? It's the final resolution of your case. Yes, sir. And according to your attorney, you probably are, have already served the 60 days, so you actually end up won't even have, end up serving it. But you understand. There is an adjudication of guilt that are, uh, are part of this. You understand all the legal ramifications of that? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. Very good. Based upon that, the court will accept your plea agreement and uh, sentence you to the 60 days with credit for time served. They'll run concurrent, so run parallel, not on top of one another, and uh, along with all the cost and, and uh, fees that are attached to it. Thanks, on sir. On these, we'll do, what do we want to do? Hundred and 90, 120 days, cost of collection? 120, 120 days enough to pay that? Uh, Your Honor, I do believe that he has a cash bond as well, a $1,500 yeah. cash bond, if we can apply that. Is that okay? Yes, Your okay. I'm, I'm not opposed to that. <laughs> okay. Very good. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Yeah. Your Honor, uh, the next case that I have is Mr. Jose Moreno. He's here present in the courtroom. That's with Ms. Basso. Mr. Ms. Moreno. Ms. Basso, we missed you last week. We, we, uh, we all, uh, as a group, realized how many cases you have. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is true, but thank you, Judge. Your Honor, we are, on this case, we are ready for trial. Okay. Uh, may we approach briefly? You may. Thank you.
Okay. Um, based upon um, based upon the discussion with council, the court uh, will order. We'll come back on May 26 for a status of this case. Yes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. And we're going to continue it until June 27th, and this will be a last continuance based yes, sir. on the, the assurances you, of both counsel. Yes, so, Your Honor. Thank we'll you. We're going to trial on the next cycle if we if it can't be resolved. We'll yes, be sir. ready, and we'll have a status for the court on the 26th. Thank, thank, thank you, you Thank you, Your Honor. That's all I have on your docket. Thank you, Mr. Catalanic. Appreciate it. Seymour Short. Mr. Keach. For the record, State of Florida versus DeAndre Seymour Short, 22 CF 465 and 568. Judge, we had set it for today tentatively to see what kind of resolution we may be able to reach. At this point, it looks like we're going to need to uh, move forward with the scheduling of depositions, at least in the 568 case. I was just appointed recently, so we'd be asking for continuance. Okay. Is this a last continuance or just I, I just received I just received the case. If you I just have, got it. This okay. is the first pretrial. Judge. Yes, that's fine. Let's just continue. We'll continue it till six uh, six twenty seven. I always get the no twenty nine six twenty nine. Continue both cases for six twenty nine. And judge, that's all I have. Maybe excuse me. No, you got some other ones. You got it. You got Edward Wallace. Edward Wallace was we clo we resolved Mr. Wallace's cases right. last week. We brought him back out and reached a, okay, a resolution. Okay, somehow we got on the thing. So we'll thank you for clarifying yes, that. Sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cadley, uh, Mr. Keach, uh, Sean Bennett, and Mr. Nopes. Your Honor, uh, Sean Bennett on 2021-2098 and 2021-2094. But I was out of town this weekend, but Friday I received an email from the state. That's a drastic change from the position that had previously been offered. I don't know if it's possible to do this. Can we see him back at 1.30 this afternoon? Absolutely. And then well, well, I'll, let's, I'll, I'll let's go to the jail. So we're going to do it in the afternoon. We've got we've got a preset hearing at 1.30. It's probably going to take some time, so it'll be a little bit later. So you don't have to come back until like 2.30. That's, that's perfect, Judge. So and That'll give me a chance whatever. to go to the jail and speak with him this morning. That's fine. Okay. Okay. We'll just I'll just put a pass over and we'll come back. Okay, very good. I'll see okay. you in a little bit. Thank you. So Paul Lemon. Judge, on Mr. Lemon's case, he's present. We've agreed to put that off to the next. I guess it's a BOP, so I don't know where the court wants to put it to. We, I mean, we're basically gearing it up for a trial or with no, without? Speaking? No, we just have to work. We need to have a conversation and talk about it. She's, I think, just got the case last week or so. So do we want to do the next miscellaneous or do we want to 526. skip? 526. 526? Okay. So we'll continue to 526 without subpoenas, so it'll be in the morning. May 26th, okay. May 26th, yeah. thank you, sir. Then thank Judge, you, Cameron Vance. Judge, I need a little bit of time to talk with him. Okay, so we'll just skip over him and then just wave at me when... I'll be back in a little bit, Judge. When you come back. Mr. LaPella, Clemens. Good morning, Your Honor. David Rare covering for Mr. LaPella this morning. Good morning. On Mr. Clemens's case, Judge, we have a written agreement with the state map approach. You may. Thank you. You go ahead and announce the plea. Judge, as to count one, the state would dismiss count one. Count two, he would plead to the lesser included offense of misdemeanor improper exhibition of firearm, 11 months, 29 days probation, withhold adjudication, court costs in class, no contact with witnesses. Complete AMC. Anger management course. That the state's agreement? Your Honor, I, I, if it included no contact, uh, yes, that's correct, Your Honor. And the state would it announce says, a dismissal. It says time. no contact with witnesses unless requested. In writing. Probation. We, we need to identify the witnesses. 
We've got to be specific because these no contact orders. I are... think the individual listed on count two was Brittany Voiles, V O I L S. Judge, I can just write in her name yeah. real quick. Sure. Mr. Clemens, would you raise your right hand, sir? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so you heard your attorney state the terms of your plea and sentencing agreement. Is that what you're agreeing to here today? Yes, Your Honor. Essentially, the core of this is the is the um, the probation for 11, um, you know, basically a year or a little less than a year. Is that your understanding? Yes, Your Honor. Got court cost, anger management. The no contact is important. That's why I made sure I identify specifics. It's your responsibility to stay away from the witness. It's not their responsibility to stay away from you. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. You understand that by entering into this plea agreement, you're waiving the right to go to a trial, and you're basically it's the final resolution of your case. Yes, Your Honor. And you had all your legal questions answered by your attorney? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Very good. Based upon that testimony, the court will accept your... Uh, plea and sentencing agreement as contained um, as stated by your attorney and contained in the plea and sentencing agreement. And your honor, if I haven't already, I announced the no process of count one. Correct. Thank you. Your honor, is that the only person, uh, Brittany Bowles, that he Brittany can't have contact with? She would be the only one in Boyles, V O I L S. That was, I, I, that was what I understood, but I appreciate that clarification because we do want to make that clear to everybody. Request of supervision, please. Yes. Next judge I have is Joseph Walker, new case in VOP 22 CF 515 18 CF 2029. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what, what number we have? Snuck up on me. Okay, very good. Walker. Mr. Walker is present here with me, Judge. Um, we'd set it off for today. Mr. Lupella was planning to speak with Ms. Boss about resolving the case. Um, Ms. Boss, I believe, was out of the office a little bit last week. That wasn't able to happen. Um, I spoke with her briefly this morning. What I'd ask to do is move this to the May 26th date without subpoenas so we can have that time to talk with Ms. Basso. And we have, in principle, Your Honor, we do have an agreement. We just need to make sure it's ironed out so we can properly present it to the court. It'll cover both the VOP and the new case. Very good. So we'll have a status on May 26th, and we'll have just to keep it on. Well, we'll just keep it on on May 26th. If not, we'll then, if for some reason it blows up, we'll uh, we'll continue it back to our pretrial regular docket. Okay. Sounds good, Very Judge. Good, Judge. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Christopher Whitaker. Judge, on Mr. Whitaker's cases, we set it for today. Again, same situation we are going to try to get with Ms. Bossa last week. We weren't able to do so. Do we want to set... May 26th status? Or I think that's a good continue? idea. Your Honor, I do need to speak with the victim in that case. Um, and as the court is aware, I was out of the office last week. We may have a resolution on that one. And if we don't, then we would be ready for trial next cycle on that. But the 26th would be an appropriate status. Very good. So we'll, we'll put on here last continuance, you know, not till the 26th, but the June would be the last if we do it, just so we all kind of. Yes, sir. And that would be a go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And I believe Even that's I all I have this morning, last. Judge. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Carl Domino, is Mr. Moore here? Okay, we'll pass over that. Okay, on uh, Clark Trivet, Trivet, you, you, okay, so what about Sylvester Warren? Same. Same? Okay. okay. Trouble third, the juniors, I can't keep track of them. Okay, so we'll just pass over when. Do they know when they're coming back? I mean, is he? Okay, just have him wave at me when we get back. Taylor Dixon. Judge Smith, Miss Etheridge's case. Can we pass that for sure? Sure. Brittany Upchurch.
Attorney Lawrence Schill. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. I have uh, Brittany Upchurch. Um, we are ready to enter a plea of no contest as charged, and I have a written plea agreement and a score sheet if I may approach. You may. <clears throat> and you're not disagreeing with the score sheet? I am not. Would you go ahead and identify the plea agreement or spell out the plea agreement? Yes, Judge. Uh, it's, uh, she's going to plea as charged in 2021 CF 1128, two counts. First one is fraud under 817-5682A. The second one is passing a forged instrument, 831.02. She's going to plea no contest to each. Uh, she'll be on eight-month standard probation, no contact with my, Michael Patrickin, 15 hours of community service, uh, completed within 60 days before termination of her supervision. The state's going to reserve on restitution and has 120 days to give us a number and then appropriate fines and costs. And adjudication will be withheld. Yes, Judge. At the state's agreement? Yes, Your Honor. And the, the uh, probation is eight months for each of the cases? Concurrent. Yes, Your Honor, yes, concurrent. A concurrent. Count. Yes, Judge. Yes. But sorry. they're with each. It just says eight months. It doesn't say each. Can be subtly different. Understood. Ma'am, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court <coughs> the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. You just heard your attorney state the terms of the agreement, core of which obviously is the eight months probation. Um, there will be some community service and the potential for some restitution. Restitution hasn't been identified, but the state's got 120 days. You can argue about it if you disagree with it, but that is a potential to be added to this. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. And that the, have you been able to go over this plea and sentencing agreements, four pages, it's got your signature on it, have you? Had all your legal questions answered? Yes, sir. Importantly, you're waiving the right to go to a trial. Yes, sir. Contest this, confront witnesses, all those constitutional rights that we forget about after we leave high school that are important for defendants in these. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Based upon your testimony, the court will accept your plea on the uh, no contest to the charges. The adjudication of guilt will be withheld on both eight months probation as well as the other fees and costs that are identified in the plea agreement. Thank you, Thank Judge. you very much. May I be excused? You may. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, State. Request supervision fees be waived. Yes. Yes. I'm Thank sorry. you. Sorry. Alfonso, uh, Alfonsia Epps, Attorney Scott. Good morning, Your Honor. Um, well, I'm here on behalf of Alfonsia Epps in case number 22223CF. My name is Lee Scott. Um, we're asking for a continuance today. Mr. I've not been able to reach my Alfonsia, is that a male or female? The male. Is Mr. Epps here? No, no, sir. What, where is it? I'm not certain. Your Honor, the state would request capius. Your Honor, this date was set for him for a cutoff date for um, a plea. We had actually it's asked a, for a, a continuance. It's a docket day. Yeah, I'd be glad to give you. I probably would have, but you've got to show up. Okay. Order, and then we'll reschedule it when we, we get him back all righty okay thank you very much thank you we'll hold for first appearance michael whitfield is mr shaw here mr stewart amend good morning It please the court, Your Honor, Brad Stewart, present. First matter I have on the docket is Adriana Amen, Judge. This is 21 CF 2861. We are still waiting on discovery, Judge. If we could have the 526 miscellaneous date, I think we 
may be able to bring this in for a landing. Okay. We'll have a status on 526, and we'll continue it to the regular pretrial, just if, if that doesn't uh, come through. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Very good. Thank you. 526, May 26, 9 a.m. in the morning. Okay. <coughs> Jeffrey Gunter. Your Honor, Mr. Gunter is incarcerated. I do have one other matter, uh, one another non-incarcerated uh, client, if I may. Sure. While we wait for Mr. Gunter, my next client would be a uh, Roman Portugal judge. <clears throat> This is 21 CF 2403. Mr. Portugal is present and approaching. Judge, similarly situated, if we could have the 526 date. <clears throat> Very good. We'll come back on a status on 526, and we'll come back on 727 for pretrial. 627 for pretrial. Okay. Okay. Judge, Mr. Gunter is present for the record. Brad Stewart, on behalf of Jeffrey Gunter, Judge, two case numbers, 20 CF 538 and 21 CF 800. Judge, uh, we are very close and have an agreement in principle. If we could have the 526 date, Judge, I think we'll be able to resolve this. No objection, Your Honor. Okay. We'll come back for status, 526 in the morning, 9 a.m. Your Honor, that's all I have on the docket. May I be excused? No, thank, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll see you. Brenchek, Mr. Swiatek. Did I pronounce that right? Mr. Brenchek. Mr. Uh, Mr. Debrenchek is in the Santa Rosa County Jail. Transported uh, over does intend to accept your representation of that as a as an excuse. Where are we at on this case? We were he, he does to intend trial. to accept the state's offer. It's a probation offer. How how can we facilitate getting that done? I think I need a date certain and do a motion in order to transport him. You want, you want to try and get it done this week? Do it on our on uh, <coughs> this Thursday. I mean, is he, can you do it that quick? You may not be able to. Really in my experience, head, is no. it's a, it's a That's week's right. process. We'll, we'll come back. Yeah. Why don't we? Uh, let's see. Five twenty-six for a plea. I think that's our next date. Okay. Do five twenty-six in the morning. Does that work? That'd be fine. Okay. Very good. Is that your only case on this? Yes, sir. Okay. Right, thank, thank you, you. Mr. Swatek. Yeah, thank you. Lawrence Dumas. 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 Is it Dumas or Dumas? Dumas. Dumas. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Jeff Tony for Lawrence Dumas in case number 2021 CF 001126 and 2021 CF 11 uh, CF 1125. Uh, Your Honor, I thought we'd had an agreement, but at this point, well, we reached an impasse on that, so we're just going to have to go back uh, into, I guess, back, go back into litigation and try to resolve it. Okay, so where are we at with the case as far as discovery? So at this point, Your Honor, he had I'm, I'm assuming with the way you're phrasing it, you are not ready to go to trial here Counsel next week? indicated that uh, he wanted to set depositions. <coughs> So, and the problem with this, Your Honor, and I, and my my client is frustrated. We we 
we had reached a point of deposition, but then we thought we had a settlement. Then, of course, we have new uh, new prosecutor who doesn't, you know, is not in line with what we, we thought we had before. And there's no notes to indicate that the previous prosecutor was in agreement with what the proposal. It doesn't matter. It, it is, yeah, I mean, it, unfortunately, no. we... It's not anybody's fault. These, these things sometimes come up. So, my question is, how far along are we with as far as discovery? You, we, are we just starting here? We're a year into the case. Just, just kind of wondering where we're at with things. We, yes, Your Honor. I know we, your client wants a resolution. Yes, of, this. Well, yes, of course. We had reached a situation where, you know, we it took forever to get the deposition scheduled, and then we canceled the depositions because we thought we had a tentative agreement. I understand that, so now Tony, we have to restart. We're, we're restarting the deposition. I don't know Mrs. Rivers' calendar with regards to depositions, what their office is going to do. Normally it takes almost a month or two just to get those depositions set, and I'm sure they're probably okay. still on that same Let's line. come back on 6-20-29. It's our next pretrial. And at that time, you can give me an up that time you know give me an update on what the discovery and we'll see where we're at with it let me come back one thing you can rest assured miss rivers will be very oh, oh yes Sean, i wasn't stuff. attacking mrs no, rivers at all i know you were it just sounded like you were <laughs> judge this is about this is about i understand i understand <laughs> Whenever we have changes, it creates certain uh, issues. Okay. The, the, the so, next, the next Scott, matter, George Scott. Yeah, the next matter I have, Mr. Scott Yarn. We, <clears throat> I've, I've just had a talk with my client. Uh, if the court could give, could pass this for about 30 minutes. Sure. We're, we're going to accept the uh, offer from the state, but I want to make sure that uh, I, I put it formally in Absolutely. writing and then have let Ms. Rivers review That's, it. So I, need about I, pre I appreciate that. Thanks, Just sir. wave at me when you're ready, and we'll get you back up. Thank you, Judge. Okay. So we'll move to, to our regional conflict cases. Is Bo ready? Hold on just a second, Ms. Flowers. Are you ready, Bo? Yes, sir. Okay. You can, we'll give you a little bit. We can let – you want to go now? I'm ready, Judge. Okay. Then we'll do yours, Ms. Flowers. Clark. Hold on, say, let me let me find your case. Sure. Okay, go ahead. Yes. So Clark, Clark Clark Trivet Trivet. Yes, Your Honor, and he's present and approaching. Judge, we're we're getting very close to working this out. If we could put this on the May twenty sixth court date, I anticipate we'll have a resolution. And that offer remains valid until then, sir. Okay. Very good. Status conference on 526 in the morning, 9 a.m. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Sylvester Warren. Judge Bo Powell, for the record, could the state and I approach briefly? You may. Okay. 
Very good. Based upon the uh, ongoing nature of the, the negotiations as stated by the attorneys, the court will go ahead, will continue this until 526 in the morning for a status conference. And this is state. Judge, the state's current plea offer, if it's not a plea on May 26, the state will revoke that offer. Okay. okay. Very good. Thank okay. you, Judge. That's Thank all you. I have this morning. Okay. Thank you very much. Ms. Flowers, if we can go. Um, Rhonda Booker. Good morning, Judge. Jennifer morning. Flowers on behalf of Ms. Rhonda Booker in 21 CF 401. Um, we had put her on today's docket for hopes of a resolution, but we ha we're just not quite there yet with the state, so we would ask for a continuance. I don't think there's any objection from no the objection, state. No objection, Judge. This is one Ms. Rivers had to conflict off of, so I've just received it. But we will be working this over the next month, so I don't have okay. any objection to push it. Right, so we'll come back on, on June 27th, 9 a.m. Okay, okay, we'll continue until Thank you, then. Judge. Thank you. I'll be in touch. Okay, thanks. Haley Campbell. Just a moment, Your Honor. Sure. Um, Your Honor, good morning. Jennifer Flowers on behalf of Haley Campbell in case number 22 CF 366. Uh, we would like to do a short continuance in this matter. Um, we filed a motion to dismiss that the state is going to look at. Um, we were hoping to put it on the, did you see there was a May 26th docket to maybe get it done ahead of the next pretrial? Okay. It, are we anticipating having a hearing on the motion to dismiss? That's your what Honor, you're trying the state to did file a traverse. I'm sorry? Well, the state did file a traverse, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. I hadn't, I hadn't seen that yet. I apologize. So um, do we want to do something on the 26th or? Yeah, we can see if we can try to work it out before then, Your Honor. That's why I want think she wants back to just settle. On the 27th? Um, She's okay. talking May instead of okay. June, May 26th, maybe well, we get it done ahead yeah, of time. 26 is the only one we have in May, so okay. we got the two trial weeks. Okay. So we'll continue to uh, 526 in the morning. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. So, f f Fiducia, David Fiducia. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And, Your Honor, I've got a signed, let me find the signed version. Oh, Your Honor, I haven't given this to the state attorney. Can I That's walk right. it over Yeah, go ahead. Take your time. Your Honor. You may. Thank you. Yes. Okay. You may announce the agreement. Okay. Your Honor, Jennifer Flowers on behalf of David Fiducia and case numbers 2021 CF 667, 2021 CF 1433. And the term, he's, um, he'll be withdrawing his previously entered a uh, plea of not guilty and entering a plea of no contest as charged to the terms as follows. In 21 CF 667, which is a VOP, he admits the VOP, counts one and two, adju adjudicate guilty, revoke, and terminate prior supervision 
11 months, 29 days, Okaloosa County Jail with credit for all time served, concurrent to all other counts and cases, followed by a new term of three years probation. Waive cost of supervision, $100 VOP cost of prosecution, $100 cost of defense, reimpose outstanding financials from original supervision, enter and successfully complete the REAP program, remain in jail until a bed is available. Substance abuse eval and recommended follow-up treatment. What take is any the REAP program? It's R-E-A-P, it's a... Your Honor, it is a, a drug rehab program. Okay. It, because, yeah, you know, then it says su substance abuse evaluation recommendation, but you're already that would to be, a specific one. That would be handled in re your honor. Okay, very that. good. Cool. And then take uh, any prescribed medications as directed and your random urinalysis, of course. And 21 CF 1433, plea as charged, count one. Um, Concurrent, adjudicate guilty, 11 months, 29 days, Okaloosa County Jail, credit for all time served, con concurrent to all other cases and counts, followed by concurrent three years probation, uh, waive cost of supervision, 515 court costs, $100 cost of prosecution, $100 cost of defense, uh, and then the same, um, do you want me to reread the the same conditions. It's basically just the same conditions to enter and complete the REIT oh, program. That's fine. Okay. And then count two, adjudicate guilty, 11 months, 29 days, Okaloosa County Jail with credit for all time served, concurrent to all other cases and counts, followed by three years of concurrent probation, concurrent to all ca other cases and counts. Counts three and four, adjudicate guilty, time served. Okay. State in agreement. Yes, Your Honor. And this will be a downward departure based on um, the defendant is amenable to the services of post adjudicatory treatment based drug program and is qualified to participate in the program. May I approach with a score sheet? Your Honor, sure. if I could approach with a, a Ms. Flowers, are, are you uh, in agreement on the score sheet? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So, Mr. Fiducia, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? So, <clears throat> your attorney did a very good job of, of explaining and, and clearly what the terms of the agreement is. a little complicated. Yes, sir. So, I want to make sure we, we, the two things I want to make sure, one, you understand what the agreement is. And two, <coughs> the, you're doing it, you're entering it freely and voluntarily. Yes, sir. So with the complexity here, I just want to make sure you understand. So you've got, essentially, you've got three separate counts that you're going to get um, an adjudication of guilt, 1129, 
So basically a year in the county jail, credit for time served. Those all run concurrent. Those all run at the same time, not on top of one another. In addition, at the end of that time, when you get out of jail, you start a new probation three years. That's on three-year counts. The other counts, you have an adjudication of time served, right? Excuse me, an adjudication of guilt, and you'll have credit for yeah, time credit. served. Basically, you've already, you've already resolved those by, because you've been, been in for a little bit. Importantly, though, on this, on two of these counts, you're going to, it's really the same thing, but key to this, you're going to be involved in an inpatient substance abuse program, the REAP program. Do you understand that? And you're committed to doing that. Yes. This isn't the end here. This is the beginning. Yes. yes okay. Yes. You understand that? Yes. And in addition to that, there'll be a substance abuse evaluation maybe when you finish that to see if there's any counseling yes. or anything like that that's necessary. So hopefully, I mean, this is one of those things that if you, if you actually follow through with this stuff, you may come out the other end of it and, you know, to. where it'll be. Some something positive. Yeah. Right, you know, right. We don't often don't think about these things as being positive, but sometimes they are. You know. So, is that your understanding of what the plea agreement is? Yes, sir. Okay. And I see you've signed the end of the plea agreement. Yes, sir. And um, and I assume you've gone over all this. Made sure you had your legal questions answered from yes. your attorney. Yes, sir. You understand that by entering into this plea agreement here, you're this is the final resolution of all your charges. Okay. Did anybody? Uh, promise you anything or threaten you to get you to enter into this plea no, no. and you've you've got all your questions answered concerning it yes sir okay very good judge if the minutes could just reflect uh, this is a bars to bed program. yes yes sir is that your understanding yes okay yes, sir. very good that that is an important uh, element so oh, yeah, yeah. Very good. So the court will uh, accept the plea and sentencing agreement and sentence you to the 11 months, 29 days, credit for time served, adjudication of guilt, plus the three years of probation, as stated, along with the other terms that are contained in the plea and sentencing agreement. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Tiffany Ryan. Wave cost to supervision. Good morning, Your Good morning. Honor. Jennifer Flowers on behalf of Tiffany Lynn Ryan, case number 4622, CF 1536. And this was an unsuccessful uh, termination from the PTI program. Um, today, Ms. Ryan is going to be entering into a plea of no contest as charged. Um, may I approach with the, with the agreement? The terms of the agreement is that adjudication be withheld. She pay five fifteen in court costs, one hundred dollar cost of prosecution, and one hundred fifty dollar cost of defense. Um, there's no probation requirement, and I believe Miss Ryan stated that she had paid some of the court costs during her PTI mm -hmm. um, during the time in PTI. So we would ask that those be applied, um, and any outstanding costs she would have to pay okay. to the clerk. Right. Um, how long would you need to? Within 30 days. I didn't write that on there, Judge, but. You can add that to it. So, so no incarcerative, no credit for time service. There's, that's just not an issue in this case. No, Judge. Okay, Ms. Ryan, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. Sir. You heard your attorney state the terms of the plea agreement. Basically, uh, essentially, costs and fees for the defense of this payable within 30 days. Uh, there will be um, withhold of adjudication in this matter, but it does affect your record. Do you understand that? Have you had all your legal questions answered? Yes, sir. Um, you understand this is the final resolution in your case? Very good. Based upon that, and... I see you've signed the last page here of your plea agreement, and you went over it with your attorney. Okay. 
Very good. Based upon that, a court will accept your plea agreement and order you to make the outstanding payments, uh, fees and costs to the clerk as stated in there within 30 days. If you don't pay it by then, it goes to collections. Okay. Thank you very much. David Brooks. Mr. Brooks is present and approaching. Thank you. Uh, and Your Honor, I've got a um, plea agreement and score sheet. May I approach? You may. Thank you. You're in agreement with the score sheet, Ms. Flowers? Yes. Yes, Judge. Um, Your Honor, Jennifer Flowers on behalf of Mr. David Wendell Brooks. In case number 21 CF 1532. Today he's going to be withdrawing his previously entered plea of not guilty and entering a plea of no contest as charged in count one of the information to an adjudication of guilt, six months community control, followed by 2.5 years of probation, waive cost of supervision, 488 court costs. $100 cost of prosecution, $150 cost of defense, a five years driver's license suspension, do not possess or consume alcohol or controlled substances, controlled substances without a prescription, random urinalysis. The state will be null processing counts two, three, and four, and on count five, it would be an adjudication of guilt and credit for time served. Okay, Mr. Brooks, would you raise your right hand, sir? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Is the state in agreement with as stated? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Brooks, you heard your attorney state the terms of the plea agreement. Is that your understanding of what the plea agreement is? Yes, sir. Okay. So you got six months of community control, and you've had all that explained to you? Higher level of supervision? Basically, house arrest. Yes, sir. But I'm, the only thing I always want to make sure and point out to people is that you know a lot of people, hey, oh, okay, probation, no jail time. Where do I sign? But this ain't the end. This is the beginning. You got six months of community control and then two and a half years of probation. You feel like you're able to do that? Stay clean. If not, you come back here and liable to serve some time. I'm gonna say no. Don't want you to do it, that. No problem with it. Okay, very good. So you've signed the plea agreement and you've gone over the, all the legal ramifications with your attorney? Yes, sir. You understand this is a final resolution in your case? Okay. Very good. Based upon that, the court will accept your plea agreement. It's to count one. There will be an adjudication of guilt, six months community control, followed by two and a half years of probation, as well as all the, the costs and fees that are contained in the five-year suspension and the other things that are contained in this. Uh, you will, uh, the states, null processing two, three, and four, correct? Yes, Your Honor. And adjudication of guilt on the no valid driver's license credit for time served. That's correct, Your Honor. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Talk to the probation officer. Kenyatta Kennedy. I have a plea agreement and score sheet. You, you may. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer Flowers on behalf of Kenyatta Kennedy in case number 21 CF 2555. Uh, Ms. Kennedy is withdrawing her previously entered plea of not guilty and entering a plea of no contest. Uh, today, as charged in 21 CF 2555, in count one, it'll be a withhold of adjudication, two years of probation, waive cost of supervision, 515 in court costs, $150 cost of defense, $100 cost of prosecution, a substance abuse evaluation and any recommended follow-up treatment, 
do not possess or consume alcohol or controlled substances without a prescription, random urinalysis. And in count two, the, arrest, the resisting arrest without violence, it'll be an adjudication of guilt and time served. So an adjudication on the misdemeanor, but a withhold on the felony. State. That's correct, Your Honor. Ms. Kennedy, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. And the defense is in agreement on the score sheet? Yes, Judge. Okay. And you can put your hand down, Ms. Kennedy. So I just want to make sure you understand your, your plea agreement and that it's entered into freely and voluntarily. So you heard your attorney state the terms of your plea agreement. And I also see that you have uh, signed uh, the plea agreement. And have you gone over this plea agreement with your attorney, make sure you understand what it means legally? Yes, sir. Okay. Because you're waiving the right to go to a trial on this, right? You understand that? This will be a final adjudication, not adjudication, but a final resolution of this matter. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. The key thing of this is you're going to be on two years of probation. There's some court costs, etc. But as a part of that, a condition of that probation, you must get the substance abuse evaluation and follow any recommendations. Are you clear about that? Yes, sir. You're willing to do that. And that's going to take some effort. I mean, this is in the end. Oh, I got this in. I don't have to go to jail. That's not the way this is. Are you clear about this? Are you going to work this? I don't want you to have to come back up here. I don't want to have to come back either. Okay. That's why it's important that you understand what you're doing up front so that you don't come back. We want you to be successful. It doesn't always seem like it, but we do. But in order to do that, it's going to take a lot of effort on your part. Okay. You willing to do that? Yes. Very good. Based upon that testimony, the court will accept your plea of uh, no contest and withhold as to the count one, the possession charge, and uh, adjudicate you uh, guilty on the resisting arrest and credit for time served on the, the possession charge, which is the felony. It's two years probation. There's some court costs and then the substance abuse evaluation and uh, follow the recommendations. Any questions? Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Lena Creech. You can go ahead and announce. Um, yes, Jennifer Flowers on behalf of Lana Shaw Creech and 21 CF 2735. Uh, we're set for plea or trial uh, this morning, and um, I don't think Ms. Creech is prepared to enter any plea, so um, we'll leave this one set for trial. Very good. How long do we, are we anticipating for this? One day, Your Honor. Okay. Very good. So we'll come back uh, for... Uh, jury review uh, this Thursday on the 5th, 9 a.m. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. <laughs> Important to come back on Thursday. You need to be involved with this, okay? I'll write it down for you when I'm done with my cases. Crooks, Damien Crooks. Your Honor, this is Mr. Damien Crooks in case number 2019 CF 357 and 21 CF 543. Um, Jennifer Flowers filling in for uh, Rudy Harper in these cases. It's my understanding that the, the state wants to set these for a contested hearing. Um, and we have no objection to that. Um, the, we would only ask that, I think there was a contested hearing date on May tw 29th that Mr. Is this Harper a violation? It's a new law as well as a VOP, Your Honor. Are we doing them both? We would ask that the VOP hearing first. Okay. And we have no objection to that, but uh, Mr. Harper is going to be out of town 529, so we would ask for a different yeah, date. Well, we, we probably, um, five, it's actually 526, but we're not... 
I think we're probably full up on some of these. Why don't we do this? I'm going to take a chance. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something I shouldn't do and jump out and engage in some scheduling. Based upon some of the trials that look like they're coming up, I think we may have a little bit of time on the second week of our jury trials. So on the th Thursday the 19th, so we can do of this month, we can, uh, we can start setting some of these contested hearings and stuff that we need on that date. So how long do you anticipate the VOP to take? No more than an hour, I'd say. Okay, so we'll start at nine o'clock. <coughs> And I, I don't have my schedule on me either, so obviously I'll coordinate with Ms. Chiquette. Yeah, we'll yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That'd be good. And if Thank we, um, so we'll, you, you'll and coordinate we'll, with the on, on the, uh, yes, I believe Judge Brown does have a court date then, but he does on it's that a jury day. review date. Yes. <laughs> Would it be better to try and do it on a different day? I'd prefer that, Your Honor. Okay, that's why. That's why I said I'm, I'm getting myself in trouble trying to do this. Judge, I'm showing there's no court on the south end on the 18th at this moment. Okay, let's do it on the 18th then. That's felonies in your case. Okay, and then we'll we'll come back on the um, the new law charge. We'll put that on our regular pretrial docket on six. 29 for inmates, correct? That makes sense? Yes, Judge. Okay. Okay. Very good. BOP hearing on 518, 9 a.m. Taylor Dixon. One of Mr. Dixon's cases, and she stepped out to talk to some clients. If we could okay. pass. We'll pass over. Jessica Duffield. Sorry. Sorry, Steve. No, I said. So we're going to skip over Dixon, and we're just going to do Duffield. So. I don't have a plea agreement. Can I? Okay. Right. Thank you. Trying to keep you on your toes, Steve. Yeah. No, you're. Jennifer Flowers on behalf of Jessica Duffield, case number 21CF1612 and 21CF3015. Today, uh, Ms. Duffield is withdrawing her previously entered plea of not guilty and entering a plea of no contest as charged in 21CF1612. <laughs> Count one would be an adjudication of guilt two years of probation, waive cost of supervision, 515 court costs, $150 cost of defense, $100 cost of prosecution, do a, a substance abuse evaluation and any recommended follow-up treatment, no alcohol or drugs without a prescription, a random urine and breath testing, count two, adjudication and credit for time served. In 21 CF 3015, um, she'll enter a plea as charged to an adjudication of guilt, two years of probation concurrent to 21 CF 1612, waive cost of supervision, 415 court costs, $100 cost of prosecution, $100 cost of defense, and no trespass at Exodus Thrift Store. Okay. Do you pronounce your name Duffield? Yes, sir. Okay. Ms. Duffield, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? So I just want to make sure you understand the plea you're entering into here today and that it's free and voluntary. Sure. So you heard your attorney state the terms of your plea agreement. Is that what you're agreeing to? Sure. 
And I see that you've signed the plea and sentencing agreement. Let me make sure and confirm that. So your name is on that. So have you gone over this plea and sentencing agreement with your attorney? Make sure you had all your legal questions answered about it? Yes, sir. Because this has a substantial impact on your legal rights. Both of these, all three of these charges are an adjudication of guilt. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. And on two of the two of the char two of the counts, you're going to be receiving two years of probation. Now, I assume the probation, you know, not assume, it says it runs concurrent. So they run parallel. They're not on top of one another. So you got two years of probation. But also, importantly, you've got to follow through with that substance abuse evaluation and follow any recommendations. You willing to do that? Yes, sir. That's a, that's a uh, term of your probation. If you fail that, you get kicked back. You could end up serving some time. Do you understand that? We want you to be successful, but you got to take this thing seriously. Okay. Also, there's some court costs and fees. All those things are going to be, you have to pay them while, during the term of the probation. Do you understand that? Okay. You understand that by entering into this plea agreement, you're, you're waiving the right to go to a trial, and this is the final resolution of your cases. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Based upon that, states in agreement with all this, right? Yes, Your Honor. And the... Uh, Based upon your testimony, Ms. Duffield, court will accept your plea agreement and sentence you to two years of probation on account one uh, of each charge. Um, and uh, they'll be concurrent uh, along with the, the, the requirement to have a substance abuse evaluation and follow all recommendations and the court cost, et cetera. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Michael Wallace. All right, I thought that Mr. Wallace had been... Um, you want to pass, we can pass over it. Can we come pass back over it just sure. for a second? That would be great. Yeah, Thank no you. Problem. Did you have a seat? Yeah. Okay. I think do you have any of the any other ones you need to double back on? Um, just Mr. Dixon's cases. I know Mr. Okay. You want to do Dixon? You want to do Dixon? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Taylor Dixon. approach of this. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Jennifer Flowers on behalf of Mr. Taylor Huey Dixon. Um, this is a plea agreement covering all of what I believe to be all of his open felony cases, 21 CF 869, 21 CF 870, 22 CF 216, and 22 CF 221. Mr. Dixon is going to withdraw his previously entered plea of 
uh, not guilty and enter a plea of no contest as charged um, as follows. In 21 CF 869, the state is going to null pros count one. Count two will be an adjudication of guilt. 60 days in the Okaloosa County Jail, concurrent to all other counts and cases, followed by 12 months community control, followed by 24 months of probation, concurrent with all other cases and counts. 515 in court costs, $100 cost of prosecution, $150 cost of defense. Count three, which is a misdemeanor, will be at an adjudication of guilt and credit for time served. In 21 CF 870, the, there will be a concurrent sentence of adjudication of guilt, 20, uh, 60 days of Okaloosa County Jail, concurrent, followed by 12 months community control, followed by the 24 months of probation concurrent, no contact with the victim, complete a batter's intervention program, 776 court costs, $100 cost of prosecution, and $100 cost of defense. And 22 CF 216, Count one would be an adjudication of guilt, concurrent 60 days jail, followed by the 12 months community control, followed by 24 months probation, all concurrent. Pay $1,500 in restitution to Lavisha Wilson at $50 per month minimum payments. No contact with the victim. No trespassing at Karafati restaurant. Do you know where that is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Maintain gain gainful employment or submit five job applications per week. 415 court costs, $100 cost of prosecution, $100 cost of defense. Count two would just be a, a repetition of the concurrent adjudication of guilt, 60 days jail, followed by 12 months CC, followed by 12 months probation, all concurrent. 22 CF 221, again, um, adjudication of guilt, concurrent 60 days jail, followed by 12 months CC, followed by 24 months probation, all concurrent, 515 court costs, $100 cost of prosecution, $100 cost of defense, count two, the misdemeanor, false ID to a Leo would be an adjudication of guilt and credit for time served. That's it. Yes, Your Honor. Late cost of supervision, Judge. Yes. Mr. Dixon, would you raise your right hand, sir? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yeah. So it's a little bit of a complicated. So do you understand, obviously, uh, your attorney uh, stated it verbally, but you've also signed the plea and sentencing agreement that also contains these same uh, plea agreement. Yes, sir. So, have you been able to go over all these individual items? What's the legal effect on you with your attorney? Had all your legal questions answered? I have, sir. You understand you're waiving the right to go to a trial and contest all these things. I do. It's the final resolution of your case. You understand that? So you've got several cases that are run, several charges that are running concurrent. So the core of this, as you know, 60 days, county jail, credit for time served. Uh, they're all concurrent, running at the same time, followed by 12 months of community control. That's a much higher level of, uh, of supervision. Are you willing to do that? Yes, sir. Followed by two more years of regular probation, so a total of three years. You understand that? There's some other important elements of this. One is to do the batter's intervention program. It's going to take some time. you got to get on that. You understand that? Do you, you understand what that program is? I, I, I do. I'm a little familiar with it. Yes, sir. Also have some restitution. There is a no contact with the victim in the battery charge. Do you understand that? I do. I just wanted to ask you. So she is um, the mother of my oldest son. Is that any way that could be changed to no violent contact? A follow up done later, Your Honor. State would ask at this point there be no contact, and if the victim is okay with it, then she can indicate so, and there can be a of that contact order. I'm sorry. I mean, it certainly makes it more complicated if you're, if you, I don't know what your arrangements are with the child and and whatnot, but certainly what? makes it difficult to have exchanges, etc. If if the mother, but what she stated should be fine. 
I'm sorry? But when she said that, that should be fine. I'm sure that she'll make the arrangements to get it situated. Okay. But understand that until this is changed, yes, sir. even if she agrees differently. Absolutely. And, and, and I'm just telling you, as I understand how these things work, these no contact orders are taken real seriously, yes, sir. as in you'll be back in orange if you violate it. Yes, sir. I mean, just telling you, just being honest with you. Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody threaten to course you to get you to enter into this plea? Yes, sir. Do you have, have all your legal questions answered from your attorney? Yes, sir. Your Honor, I just um, I just heard back. Sorry, he's he does have a pending misdemeanor case in county court today as well. And I just heard back. I don't know if this is something we can handle up here, or if he does need to go in front of that judge. But she's agreed to amend her offer. To um, I have a case number. Um, I would just ask that that be handled in Mr. Handled in Mr. Okay, yeah. that's totally fine. I forgot how that goes. That's fine. Yeah, it, it, you just can't. It, it probably can all be dealt with and fine, but it, that's until totally they fine. have a chance to kind of go over. Okay. Totally fine. I just wanted to bring that up. I that's appreciate it. it. That's mm -hmm. fine. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Dixon, uh, based upon your testimony, the court will accept your plea and will sentence you to the 60 days in county jail. All these are concurrent, credit for time served, along with the community control and the probation as well okay for the record I do believe he has the 60 days in but they'll calculate that to okay. that for you at the jail thank you judge thank you So you can come back whenever you get the other ones. Yes, Mr. Knows, which one is yours? Okay. Ms. Cashwell, come on up. He's approaching the podium. Patrice Cash on behalf of Mr. Anderson. My understanding um, was that the court made an announcement that no um, plea agreements would be accepted after today's date. Right. For um, this cycle. So we're going to, uh, or the defense is going to ask for a continuance because he is, she has not been able to get in touch with the victim yet. Um, and there, I think there is a good likelihood that we can work this out, but we won't be able to work it out by today, right now. Okay. That's correct, Your Honor. Okay. You want to go to the next cycle? That'd be fine, Your Honor. That's fine. And then if we if we resolve it earlier, we can bring it in for an early. Absolutely. Plea. Yes. Absolutely. Perfect. Okay. So we'll come back on uh, continue to six twenty nine. Okay. And I'll let you for know the next pre trial conference. I appreciate it. Do you understand? Oh, you do. Okay. Thank you. I think that's all yours. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Nopes, which one? Got Cameron Vance. Hold on just a second on me. Go ahead. I may approach judge. Sorry. Thank you. Judge Mr. Vance, Cameron. Uh, Vance has two cases on the docket, 2020 CF 1877 and 21 CF 1683. Based upon plea negotiations with the state, uh, at this time he's going to enter uh, a no contest plea in 20, 21 1683, count one, a lesser included of possession of greater than 20 grams of marijuana, and the state's going to no pros count two in that case number, as well as they are going to no pros entirely, uh, 2020 CF 1877. Special conditions of two years of probation uh, would be the court would withhold adjudication of guilt. He'd pay 615 in court cost, have a drug evaluation and any treatment recommended. He would not possess any alcohol or controlled substance without a doctor's prescription. He would be allowed to terminate the probation early if provided he's completed all the conditions and there's been no uh, violations. 
he would also agree uh, to forfeit the firearm in the 2020 CF 1877 case. We talked about, you said, because I asked you to make it misdemeanor, you said, you want, you want to pass it for that? Judge, if we could just pass this briefly and make sure we have the score sheet correct and the agreement correct. Sure. Do you want this back? Yes. May we approach? Sure. Okay. Mr. Tony, you have one? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, we're back again in George Scott Jr. in case number 20, 21 CF 1204. At this point, Your Honor, we're going to announce ready for trial. Okay. Very good. So we'll come back on. Uh, Jury review, which is this May May fifth at nine a.m. I think last time you said you thought it would estimate about it, just a one day trial. Yes, yes, Your Honor, it should be a pick okay. and go. Very good. So we'll come back for jury review on this on the fifth. Okay. Thank you very much, Your Honor. There's one more matter that I'm handling. It's Anthony Miles for Mr. Uh, Tony Henderson. Okay. Hold on. Thank you. Anthony Miles. Yes, we had a waiver of, of, of his appearance in this particular matter, Your Honor. I think, Your Honor, we had talked about this last week with regards to uh, a continuance in this particular matter. And you wanted to make sure that uh, Mrs. Basso was present with regards to that continuance. Your Honor, there is a global offer at this time. He does have three cases pending. Um, I believe there's been some changes in attorneys on both sides on those cases, so we have no objection to a continuance on this. It would be our intention to try the human trafficking case first. This is associated with that, but that would be in the other division. It's in the other division. Yes, sir, the human trafficking so you case. you want to come back in June? Yes, sir, if we could do that. And then by then, hopefully, Mr. Miles will have a chance to speak with counsel that he was appointed on the other case, and we'll see where we are on that. Okay, so... Uh Continue to June 27th. He's not, he's an inmate, so it's 29th. Yeah. Yes, sir. <coughs> June 29th. <coughs> okay. That's all I have, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Mm -hmm. Tony, would you approach? You can come. I didn't know. If no.
Uh, you want to do one? Oh, there, Mr. Moore. You know, we're just I mean, talking about you. Yes. No, take your take your time. I was going to take a short break for this morning, but we we can do one. We can do a few more before we do that. Which one is yours, Mr. Judge? We just had entered the plea, but there was a problem with the score sheet. Okay. I could approach. Okay. Give me the name again. I'm sorry. I'm trying. Vance. 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 Thank you. Okay. Got it. Okay. So, Judge, I think we've entered the plea. Uh, the question the state had was whether or not the score sheet was right, and it actually needed to be amended to a level one. Okay. So, are you in agreement on the score sheet? Yes, sir. Okay, so. So, but other than that, the, your previously announced uh, plea agreement is stands, and obviously it's reflected in the in the actual written agreement as well. Yes, sir. And the state, I know you may have already said this, state's in agreement. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So, Mr. Vance, would you please raise your right hand? I need to ask you a few questions just to make sure you understand and that this your plea is free and voluntary. Yes, sir. Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Okay. So you heard your attorney state the terms of your of your plea agreement, that yes, there would be two of the charges will be null process. That's a fancy way of saying that the state's dismissing them. You can put your hand up. Okay. You're, so they're, you're going to uh, dismiss two of the counts, and then the, the one count of um, marijuana distribution would be uh, lo lesser included possession of greater than 20 grams of marijuana. That's a lesser included, correct? It's not a distribution charge, just greater than 20 grams no, no, of marijuana. No, 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 The original was, was a di The original was distribution. That's what I meant. I meant to say it, yeah. but the new one is a lesser included to that chart. If I, if I didn't say it correctly, thanks for clarifying. Thank no, that's, that's important. So you're going to have an adjudication will be withheld, two years of probation, Plus, you've got, importantly, you know, you've got to do the drug evaluation and follow through. So you've got some work to do. You willing yes, to do that? Yes, sir. So you can be successful? You need yes, to stay sir. in good contact with the probation office. That's the key part of this. Okay? Yes, sir. Very good. There are a number of other um, terms and conditions that were outlined by that as far as the costs. And those would be uh, payable during the cost of probation. So you understand that by entering into this plea, the final resolution of all your charges? Yes, sir. You understand that? And did you get all of your legal questions answered by your attorney? Yes, sir. Are you satisfied with the representation of your legal defense? I am. Okay. Very good. Based upon that, the court will accept your, your plea and will uh, have a withhold of adjudication on the single count. The other two will be uh, null prost. Uh, Two years probation is the core, as well as the other issues that are contained in the plea and sentencing agreement. Thank you, Judge. Um, do you normally waive the cost of supervision? Yes. Okay. Yes, we will. Right. Thank you. We'll waive the cost of supervision. Okay. But I'll see you back at 2.30. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Flowers, do you, you want to do one? Or we? I was going to take a short break, but we can do yours before. Okay, why don't you come up and announce it, and then we'll... on behalf of Michael Wallace and 21 CF2189 or 98 and we're just requesting uh, for a continuance in this matter to um, I've recently just taken over these cases and sure. need to review discovery one second let me make sure we'll continue to June yes judge that will okay. be they will leave the offer of credit time served open until June pretrial, and then the offer will be revoked. Okay. Okay, I'll communicate that. Um, okay, stay in touch with your attorney during this, and we'll figure out where we're going with everything. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, let's take a short recess. We'll come back in 10 minutes at 11. All rise, please.
for seven and at this time the state would revoke their offer it was less than guidelines and you know, if we could plus this on the June trial docket I mean trial cycle okay thank you the June 27th yes sir thank you okay thank you honor thank you your honor I have two more but I need to do some more paperwork before they're ready okay thank you your honor Mr. Shaw here, I know he had a case. I've not seen him yet, Judge. Your Honor, I seem to recall him saying in court last week that he did have another case going uh, today and that he wouldn't be able to do it. He wasn't going to be here at all? I can text him, Judge. Okay. Yeah. So, so we'll just continue. With, I know we've got... Uh, Jeremiah Murphy, I think we were going to. Judge, for this case, would it be possible for defense counsel and I to coordinate with your judicial assistant to set a date in the future? I don't think it needs to be on jury trial review, but if we could just set a, a date in the future, possibly status hearing, status conference. I'm not assuming. I, as a matter of fact, I assume you probably wouldn't be ready. Any chance you'd be ready by the 18th of May? Because I opened that date up for kind of a special... How long do we anticipate on that day? Uh, how long for that sentencing? I know it'll um, be some time, but. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a, um, a negotiated plea, so I don't think it should take that long. Um, I would say no longer. There's not, there's, I thought there was going to be. There, there could be family that wishes there to be There was going to be sentencing present. that it was going to be a plea? Yes. I believe so, Your Honor. Yes. Oh, I, I understood that it was maybe a plea to the court or something that there would no. be a sentencing no your honor it's going to be a straight to... plea oh, okay yeah. but just that uh, there might be some some uh there might be judges people that want to, to want to say something that would have a right to do that right okay we can set it for the 18th that's fine that works good because we had about an hour we can set it for uh maybe 10 a 10 a.m okay sure that works judge Okay. No, we're going to be fine. I'm not unless the judge wants to see him. Okay. <coughs> Jeff Ledoux. Charles Russell, Public Defender's Office, Judge. This is Jeff Ledoux. Case number is 21 CF 1829. We have a uh, negotiated plea agreement, Judge. If I may approach, and I have a copy that I can read from. You may. Thank you. Thank you. In exchange for a plea to counts two and three, which are misdemeanors, the state's going to null pros count one, which is the felony. Um, adjudication of guilt on counts two and three. The state is recommending six months probation on each count consecutive for a total of one year's probation, uh, waive cost of supervision, uh, pay standard court costs, $50 cost of prosecution, uh, $100 PD fee, uh, 24 hours of community service, complete the anger management course, and have no contact with the alleged victims in this case. Uh, one of them is a minor. I put the initials and date of birth on there, and then the other one is William Rowland. And because it's a plea to misdemeanors, there is no score sheet. I do have a question, Your Honor. I'll be glad to answer, but first, or try to answer, but ask your attorney first before I, sometimes you don't want to ask the court. No. Well, my previous oh, attorney. I, I, oh, 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 I'm trying to protect your interest, yes. believe me. I'm not, I'm not trying to cut you off. Yes, sir. Uh, let me swear you in. Raise your right hand. You swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, Your Honor. What's your question? Uh, for once in my life, I'm up here for something that I have not done. But how can, I'm just wondering why I'm getting charged with anything when there's no physical If you haven't evidence. done something, then set this thing for trial. Let's go try it. Well, I'm just saying, if I'm getting probation over something I didn't do, what if I get falsely tried? Then I'm away from my family. What is your question? How did they have a case with no physical evidence? 
Uh, th that's, that's not for the court. I, the, the, I, I don't know what the evidence is before me at this point. I don't know whether there's evidence or not. The reporting officer got fired my last public defender. Mr. Mr. Ledoux, I mean, we're, I not here, we're not here at that stage. We're not here trying the substance of the case. I'm not trying to cut you off. I don't know. If you, if you feel like the, the state has improperly charged you, set the thing for a trial. That's why we have a trial by jury among your peers. I'm, I'm not, we're not trying to force you into some plea. As a matter of fact, what you're telling me right now is I'm going to be asking a lot of hard questions to make sure to even accept a plea from you. So you want a little more time to think about it? Tell you the truth, this has been going on for about two years. I'm ready to get it over with. To be honest with you, i got a family of my own i got to take care of. And, so you, you know. want to proceed with the plea? Yes, sir. Okay, so you're under oath. So... Um, First of all, I want to make sure you understand what the plea is. So count number one is being dismissed. Counts two and three, you're, uh, which are misdemeanors, you're being adjudicated guilty. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. You get six months probation on each one. They're stacked on top of each other, so it's a year. Yes, sir. Okay, do you understand that? There's court costs, et cetera, for each one. And there's, uh, you got to complete an anger management course. Willing to do that? I have to. Well, no. I just want to make sure you understand what you're, what you're agreeing to here. Okay. So, you also have no contact with the victims. I don't know the clear victims. About? You don't know the victims. Okay. That's... Well, okay. I was wondering how, like, if I'm at Walmart with my family, I'm Mr. shopping. Ledoux, Mr. Ledoux, Mr. Ledoux, I'm, look, I'm not trying to cut you off, man. Save your breath. We're not dealing with the substance of it today. Yes, sir. I'm not dealing. So let me ask you some other questions. So if you don't believe you've done any of this stuff, why are you entering into a plea? <clears throat> Last time I was here, I told you I'd have a paid attorney. I called Don Drell. He gave me word of advice. He told me that my last public defender, Brittany Hudson, Screwed me over on the statement she put in my paperwork that there was probably no better deal that I could get what the state's offering right now. So that's why I'm here today. Okay, so you believe this is in your best interest to do this even though even though you don't believe you did any of this? Well, with a man that's been fighting law for as long as he has and he gives me his advice, I'm going to take it. So you're, so even though he's not your, 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 Legal counsel, you, you've, I you've I was going to hire him. He said to save my money. So you understand that if I if I accept your plea here today, you can't back up on this thing later. I understand. Well, I see you've signed the back of this thing. Have you gone over all the different kind of what this means to you legally with yes, your sir. attorney? With Mr. Russell? Have you had all your legal questions answered? And you understand this is the final resolution of your case? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. I'll accept your plea based on your uh, clear statement that you believe it's in your best interest and you feel like you've gotten advice from legal counsel that this is your best interest, even though you don't think you've done anything. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. The court will accept your plea. Then see you on counts two and three to six months probation to uh, be consecutive, so on top of one another. Waive the cost of supervision, but the other cost and fees must be paid during term of your probation. You must complete anger management and uh, have no contact with the victims. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Larry Miller, Larry Jack Miller. Charles Russell, 
Public Defender's Office, Mr. Miller is present and approaching judge. He is before the court on two cases, 20 CF 2060 and 20 CF 2061. Um, this case is back from last week. At that time, defense had made a motion for continuance. I would renew the motion for continuance. And 2060, Mr. Miller is charged with a lewd and lascivious count that's a life felony. Um, if that were scored by itself with nothing else, he would score four months in prison and could get up to 30 years in prison. The other case, 20 CF 2061, is a capital offense, meaning that if he's convicted as charged, the court would have to sentence him to life in prison. I had a chance to review both cases um, yesterday. Um, I don't believe all the depositions have been taken because when I reviewed the case in 2060, Stacy Dobson with the child protection team was not deposed. She was set, but I couldn't find a recording or a transcript of her deposition. And then in 20 CF 2061, uh, Stacy Dobson is a witness in that case. I couldn't find her deposition or somebody named George Heath either. So because um, I've just gotten these cases in the last week and all the depositions haven't been taken and these are serious charges, we would renew our motion for continuance. Yeah, the state will continue to object. We have been ready for this case for, gosh, at least two or three cycles. This was originally Mr. Gibbs's case. It started back in October of 2020. Um, as far as the depositions go, Your Honor, Stacy Dobson, I can proffer to the court uh, what Ms. Dobson did do. She conducted the child forensic exam. Uh, in both cases, I can also proffer to the court that the state has no intention of offering Ms. Dobson's testimony. The child, uh, who is now an adult, a matter of fact, in the capital felony, will be present and able to testify on her own behalf. So that's not an issue. Um, if Mr. Uh, Russell believes he needs to speak with Mr. Heath, we can get that set as fast as possible. Is that interview taped? Don't they normally Yes, tape it is in? taped, Your Honor. There's uh, basically the deposition generally with the CPT will be did you do anything that was not on the tape? And they generally, this, the answer is, we introduced ourselves and took them back to the room. But in this case, we're not even planning on using the CPT as part of the evidence for the jury because the child would be present. Um, the child who is now an adult would be present. So um, we had indicated to the court, I believe Ms. Rivers may have shared, may have shared with this with the court, that particular um, witness, the victim in the case um, will be in some training, so she'll be unavailable. We were trying to get this done beforehand to put this behind her. She has a right to get this behind her. It's been pending for a long time. So we are strenuously objecting to that. If the court does allow a continuance, then we are going to ask this be done, or the court work with us to do it after her training. So, okay, so her... Tell me about the, the scheduling, the training part. Uh, the training, her training begins the week after our trial week. So that's why we were trying to get this done. Trial. This trial week in May. We were trying to get this done in May right. with our next trial week. Uh, How long fact, is her training going to be? It goes until it? August, from May 16th till August. Okay. So we're going to be asking if the court does allow the continuance, then we may have to ask the court to work with us on that trial date. But we do want to get this behind her. It's been a long time. I mean, as far as where within the two weeks, you know, Try and schedule it to accommodate her. We'd have to do it on our September trial week, then, most likely. You're saying you're going to have to bump it all the way out. Because the next one's in July. Now, I will I will speak with her, and if she is available or wishes to do this in a July trial week, then we'll come back to the court. But if the court does grant it, how long of a trial is this? As far as the state's concerned, Your Honor, exclusive of jury selection, one day. It's a, it's it's a pretty straightforward case. And what are the, the, the depositions that you've got? You've got the ones that are taken or the ones that need to be uh, taken? The ones that need to be taken. In well, 20 you, you just stated a couple, and I, I didn't. In 2016, it's the child protection team, Ms. Dobson, that uh, Ms. Basso was referring to. In 2061, which is the capital case, it's Ms. Dobson again and somebody named George Heath. And, I and the Dobsons are both, <clears throat> she would be the person who conducted the interviews, which are taped. So there would be, I mean, you don't expect it to be a lengthy deposition, do you? No, sir. And what is the other, the other than Dobson? Somebody named George Heath, H-E-A-T-H. -E 
Your Honor, we you know we can Who make him Mr. available. Mr. Heath. Yes, sir. It's a mystery. Yes, sir. What's, what do we know about Mr. Heath, and why, why is he being deposed? He's listed as a state witness, Judge. Okay. As a potential witness. Dobson is listed as a witness too, Judge. And we can remove Ms. Dobson if that comes down to that. Well, I, I don't know if I want to remove because I don't know what she's going to say. These are serious cases. I understand. Like I, said. I understand. Believe me, I'm taking it very seriously, Mr. Russell. And, and, Your Honor, our concern is just that I understand Mr. Russell is stepping in, but this is we have put the court on notice and Mr. Russell on notice two cycles ago. Ms. Hudson was ready to try this, and then, of course, she's, she stepped away. Mr. Gibbs was ready to try this. So this victim has a right to move forward, as does the other victim, and that's our concern. If it keeps getting pushed out for, now we need to do this, now we need to do that. Let's get everything done that needs to be done and get this behind them. So what, Heath, what, what's, I mean, I, I'm not asking you to detail the testimony. What, what are we, who is that player? And what, what, what is the key? I mean, like Dobson, you were just saying, you know, what her involvement was. And yes, Your Honor. I believe Mr. Heath is actually the father. Of one of the victims? Yes, Your Honor. victims? And there's, there's no problem with making him available, so we'll just have to find out. If he does, if the court does grant a continuance, then we will get this on the books as fast as possible. Ms. Dobson still employed with CPT? I don't know. Okay. They've had some turnover. We will assist in getting her as well if we need to. Can we get the depositions taken this week? It seems like these are pretty straightforward. You can make... Mr. Heath available? Or? I will inquire as soon as we get out of here today, Your Honor. Judge, again, these are serious charges. I understand that. And if I have to represent Mr. Miller at a trial in these cases, um, we will be making constant requests for a continuance. And if he gets convicted, um, we'll deal with the issue on appeal as far as his due process rights to having an attorney who knows his case and can effectively represent him. So if we try this case this cycle, I'm just putting the court on notice and the, the state that we may have to try this case again in the future. Well, I, I understand. I understand your position. Okay. I mean, that's a, that's, it's a position for the record that I would expect you to take. So, I mean, I'm not, not faulting you for it. That's a shame that, you know, I mean, I, I would feel much more comfortable, obviously, to to do a, a last continuance if we if we didn't, but, but then you're going to be pushing it until September Your to, Honor, to try it. if the court wishes and the court is inclined to grant another continuance, then perhaps we can set this for a status sooner, like 526, where we can basically inform the court depositions are set, there's nothing else pending, there's no motions, basically. So we sit there and go, okay, this is the day that we finally pick a day and it doesn't slip again. Absolutely. I have no problem doing that. That's fine with the defense. We're Judge. setting a separate case management. I have no problem doing that. I, I do recognize the seriousness of the charge. And I do uh, also recognize that it's not anybody's fault that defense counsel is not here, no longer with the, 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 the public defender's office. So uh, it's not, no, nobody's done anything wrong here. And it is unfortunate, though. So, um, and so I, I will continue it, but we all, there, there's no, there's, you can't think of any, I mean, there's always something that could come up, but where you sit today, there, there's no reason that this should be continued beyond the next cycle. We're talking about two months. Other than witness availability for the state. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. And, Your Honor, we will be able to advise the court on the 26th as to the date certain that we're requesting. And I'll let Mr. Russell know that before that. Very good. So we'll come back 526 for a status or case management, however we want to say it. Say where we're at with the trial. But we will continue it to the next cycle, which is 620, uh, 627. It'll be on our standard pre-trial, but we'll discuss it more on 
May 26th. And the court is noting and would ask the, that the clerk also note in the minutes that, am, am I correct in saying that both parties would acknowledge that unless there's some something un, untold, un, unexpected or un, not unusual, but unexpected, um, that this would be the last. Continue. Barring something unforeseen, yes, unforeseen. Your Honor. Unforeseen, that's the word I'm looking for. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, very good. Thank you, Judge. Thank and you. This, just for the record, the state will be intending to go forward first on the case uh, 20, 2061. Capital case? Yes, sir, the capital okay. case. Thank you, Judge. Good. Thank you, Your Honor. And Judge, the next one on the list is Herman Newton, but I just got an offer from the state today that I would like to pass the case and go back and talk to Mr. Newton. That's fine. Lena Odom. So what we're going to do is we're going to go we'll get as many cases as we can uh, till we hit the noon hour, and then we'll uh, we'll come back and then we'll take a break because there's the one thirty hearing. So we'll come back at two thirty and catch the remainder of our cases. Judge, this is Lena Odom. Case number is 22 CF 462. I spoke to Ms. Odom. Uh, at this time, she has some things that she wants me to look into. We did go over the state's pretrial intervention offer, but at this time, we're going to ask for a continuance. It is the first time up for Ms. Odom's case, so we'd ask for the June 27th pretrial date. Very good. We'll continue. Okay with the state? Yes, sir. Court will continue to 627 in the morning. Randall Pendergraf. He's in custody, Judge. Yes. Right. <laughs> Charles Russell Public Defender's Office, Judge. This is Randall Pendergraf. Case number is 22 CF 313. If I could have a moment. Judge, we have a negotiated plea in Mr. Pendergraf's case in exchange to pleading as charged. The state's recommending time served, uh, standard court costs, $100 cost prosecution, $150 public defender fee, and that Mr. Pendergraf would have 90 days after his relief, after his release to pay or the money would go to collections. And I have a score sheet if I may approach. Very good. State in agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Is the defense in agreement on the score sheet? Mr. Pendergraf, would you raise your right hand, sir? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court? It's the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, sir. You heard your attorney state the terms of the plea agreement. Is that your understanding of what the plea agreement is? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I'm looking also at the plea and sentencing agreement and seeing that uh, your signature is on the end of it. Have you been able to go over this plea and sentencing agreement with your attorney? Make sure you understand uh, what the legal ramifications are to this plea agreement. Have you had all your legal questions answered? Yes, I'm happy. You understand that this is the <laughs> final resolution of your cases? Okay. And the key thing, obviously, is you're getting credit for time served, which basically means you don't have to serve any additional time. So really what you've got is the court costs and fees of 90 days after you get out to pay, and then it goes to collections. Very good. Based upon uh, your testimony, uh, the court will accept your plea and sentencing agreement, and sentence you as stated in the agreement. Thank you. Good luck. Have a good summer. Rogers, Rusty Rogers. Charles Russell Public Defender's Office, Judge. This is Rusty Rogers. Case numbers are 19 CF 2691 and 22 CF 60. The 2019 case is a violation of probation based on the new law violation in the 22 case. We currently have depositions scheduled for 523. Um, so if we could have this case continued to your next cycle, uh, hopefully it'd be in a <coughs> resolve or, or set for trial. Very good. Continue the case till 629. Thank you very much. Devin Sanders. 
time, what time? How come she would? I'm going to talk to you at the jail. I know that's just two more months. You know, I just paid four hundred dollars and stuff because I was told I wasn't getting. I'm gonna talk to you at the jail. Charles Russell, Public Defender's Office, on Devin Sanders' case, Judge, for the record, it's 22 CF 179. Ms. Sanders was the court was with, before the court last week. Uh, the way we resolved it is we were going to get her to sign another waiver of extradition. I checked the, the jail website yesterday, and the jail had released her uh, April 29th, so I'm guessing she's going <coughs> to Alabama or wherever her warrant is from. And, and Ms. Sandler, Michelle Sandler, who... She did sign the... I'm assuming she did, and that's how they were able to get her off. So I, I, I think that's taken care of. Is it, do we need to do anything? I don't think so. Okay. If it comes back up, get it back on the docket. Yes, sir. Nick Schoffler. Schoffner. Schoffner. Nicholas Schoffner. Charles Russell, Public Defender's Office. Case number, uh, Nicholas Schoffner is the defendant. Case number is 21 CF 166. Judge, this was passed from last week because we were trying to find Mr. Schoffner. Yep. I believe that Mr. Schaffner is in Citrus County because he's got some active cases down there that they recently went to court on. Um, I think the state found out that he had actually posted bond in this case, and Mr. Schaffner is not here today, so I'm guessing he's still in Citrus County. Yes, Judge, but I don't according know. to Benchmark, he did post a $1,000 bond on January 27th of 2021. So if he is in Citrus County, I believe the appropriate action at this time would be to issue a KPS. That way we have a hold here, um, and he'll be brought back to handle his charges here. And I don't know what to say to that, Judge. I think he's in a juvenile program down there, but I can't swear to it. I, I wasn't able to confirm that. I mean, whether he's in a juvenile program or adult filed, I know he's got he's picked up cases all over. I fortunately have known this teenager for ten years. When he was, I think he was ten years old when he came into the system. And he does turn eighteen in August <coughs> this year. I knew. I thought he might have even already been an adult. So, um, so I'm I'm going to issue a KPS just to put a hold on it. No bond or first appearance, Judge? Or? I think we'll go no bond just to figure out where we're at with it. Chance Stapleton. Charles Russell, Public Defender's Office. Chance Stapleton is present and approaching. Case number is 21 CF 3291. Um, Judge, this case was in court last week. We were asking for a continuance for depositions. This was Ms. Basso's case who wasn't here last week. Um, I think we set it for today for this date. Do you have the deposition set already, sir? I do not. I mean, it's going to be a probation offer if you want to set it sooner. We have no objection to one last continuance, Your Honor. If there are depositions needed, we'd ask Mr. Russell to get those on the books with us. Um, the next 48 hours at least get them on the books and if the state will send me the offer over or something official i will discuss it with mr stapleton and if we decide that we're going to take it or wanted to resolve it earlier we can add it to the 526 docket okay. i had sent that previously but i'll make sure you get it because i know there's been some changes yeah i, I couldn't find it very good no problem we'll, we'll take care of that change to 627. i'll be in touch okay okay sounds good robert strauss He's in custody, I think. Oh, sorry. You are correct. Judge, this is Charles Russell, Public Defender's Office. This is Robert Strauss. Case number is 20 CF 3247 and 21 CF 247. Uh, we had passed this from last week, Judge, because Ms. Glisson had the 20 case and Ms. Basso has the 21 case. We were trying to see if we could get a global offer. Um, we still have a deposition to take in the 20 case with Ms. Glisson. Um, we can continue it. The state can 
get together and make me a global offer? There was actually an offer made, and this probably did not reach you, Mr. Russell. Um, it was for six years of Department of Corrections followed by 10 years probation designation as a sexual offender. That would cover both cases. Those are the basics of it. If that's essentially it, Judge, at this time we're going to ask for a continuance, um, finish out the depositions. Hopefully next cycle we can resolve it or set it for trial. What depositions do we have? I, I don't mind. I'm going to make it continuous. I just, I just kind of want to get on the record. I don't want to, because it is qu quite an old case. And it's not anybody, I mean, you're all. In the 21 case, I believe all the depositions are done. I'm not <coughs> sure of that. Can grab that one? Ms. Glisson's case, the state provided a new address for the alleged victim in that case. And so she's, I think she's the only one left in Ms. Glisson's case. So you just need to take that one deposition, is that? I believe so, point? Judge. I believe so. So being the last situation, we've got a couple months to get it done. Sounds like uh, this should be a last continuance. I know we, we would be prepared to go forward on the 21 case. Next cycle, not a problem, Your Honor. It's, it's a CP case, child abuse case okay so at least one of them will go yes sir okay we'll continue to the 20 27th for both of them thank you honor. the clerk's indication this is the last thank you honor. thank you <clears throat> james sullivan Charles Russell, Public Defender's Office. A judge present and approaching is James Sullivan. Case number is 21 CF 3059. Um, this was passed from last week because Mr. Sullivan was in the hospital at that time. Court wanted us to get documentation. I do have documentation. I haven't filed it yet, but I did show it to the state. Um, he was admitted on April 24th. Is there a capius out there? No, no Your Honor, you, uh, we okay. just agreed to continue to today for okay. Mr. Russell to verify that he was in the hospital. Okay. And we'll file this, Judge. Uh, we were going to ask for a continuance of the first time up, as best I can tell on the case, so we're going to ask for a continuance anyway to so the we'll June 27th. Continue it to 627. I assume the state's okay with that. Yes, Your Honor. 627, 9 a.m. Thank you, Your Honor. If you want to run that by the office, that would be great. Where's, where's it? Where's yeah, same place. Okay. Charles Velez. Charles Russell, Public Defender's Office, present approaching judges, Charles Velez. Case number is 21 CF 2690. This was passed from uh, last week for me to have a chance to talk to Mr. Velez about the state's plea offer that was on the table. After discussions with Mr. Velez, he wants to uh, uh, go over this case some more and, and take depositions, so at this time we're going to ask for a continuance to the next docket. No objection. Okay. So I would expect, based on the, the, the type of case it is, I would expect us to make some substantial progress on this case to, in the next, during this cycle. And the state oh, will revoke oh, the current offer that's been conveyed. I want to make sure the defendant hears this, so I'll wait. Mr. Russell, she, she wanted to make sure and put some on the record. I just want to make sure that um, defendants aware that the current offer that is out there will be revoked at the next pretrial. So June 27th, if it's not taken. Yes. Okay. I will discuss that with him. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Taylor Dixon. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We already took she pled, uh, he had multiple cases with Sorry. RCC. Sorry. Yep. We pled those. Austin. Cecilia. Cecilia. So, so for Ms. Austin, um, and I have something um, to discuss with her, if we could pass this to after 2.30, Your Honor. Baez. C. Etheridge for um, Mr. Baez Rosario, and we have an interpreter here for him. Okay, very good. 
If I could get proof of completion of the driver's school and court costs at this time, the state would be inclined to dismiss the case. Your Honor, the state was going to offer or did offer a PTI agreement, but Mr. Uh, Rosario has already completed the terms and conditions, so at this point, I will announce the null process. Ask him if he has any questions. Okay, thank you. Let's try and get the, let's, let's, let's focus on the inmates, try and get them up before, I don't know if we can get them all before lunch, but let's get Billy Grace. I'm skipping over Davis. A case the efforts for Billy Grace. We're here in a 20, uh, 2022 CF 304, um, and he would like to accept the state's offer of a withhold of um, 12 months of probation, $867 in court costs, $100 cost of prosecution, $150 public defender fees, anger management, and no contact with Angel Rodriguez. He just needs to sign this, Judge, since I couldn't stick it in the back there for him to sign. Grace, would you raise your right hand, sir? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes? Okay. Pull that. Slide that mic over so he can talk into it. I heard you. I swear. Okay. Thank you. Is the state in agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So you heard your uh, attorney state the terms of the uh, plea agreement, Mr. Grace. Is that what your understanding of the plea agreement is? Yes, I understand. Yes. Okay. Uh, he has to stay 500 feet away from my house. I'm sorry, what did he say? Yeah. Let me, let me say that. I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it. So the terms of the plea agreement are 12 months of probation, right? You got some costs. But as an important part of this, you've got... No contact with Angel Rodriguez. Who is Angel Rodriguez? That's the victim. I know, but who is that? What's the relationship? He is um, non-family. He is, uh, I guess he is a boyfriend of my my aunt, which is one of the heirs of 965 Mayor Trail, which okay. is my house. Yeah, I'm okay. So you understand that you're to have no contact with Mr. Rodriguez? Yes, I understand. I mean, you just said something about being within 500 feet. Does he reside within near your house? No, he don't reside near my house. He he lives across town in his own house. Okay. Okay. So you understand that this is this is a one side. This no contact is your obligation. Do you understand that? So you need to stay away from him. He doesn't need to stay away from you. Yeah. Sounded like the way you were saying it that he had to stay away from you. I'm, I'm a, you understand I'm, the difference? Yes, sir. I understand. You got to stay away from him. He don't have to stay away from you. He could actually walk up to you in public. He ain't going to get in any trouble. You're going to get in trouble if you don't stay away from. It's, it's not going to be a problem. It generally is not. I just want to make sure you're clear that it's your obligation to stay away from him. Okay. Well, if you okay. bump into him, you need to stay away from him. I, I understand. Okay. Uh, I am kind of in question, though. Uh, you said in public, though. He can't. He can't come up to my my known address, can he? Uh, if, if, this is how, if this if this he seems to be wanting to play word games. If this is how it's going to be, we'll just revoke the offer. No, ma'am. No, 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 no. no. Let, let's just clarify. I understand. Look, and it's clear. Uh, okay. He can go to he can go to his girlfriend's house, who lives right beside him. Is my understanding? He's not going to be the victim's not going to be barred from going anywhere. 
Well, right, but I've told him that if the victim is coming to harass him, that he needs to call the police. Exactly. If the victim won't leave. That's true. His, his house, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're on probation, <laughs> you know, you need to, you know, let somebody know. Just All right. Know. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. You know how many times there's ever been a problem of it going the opposite direction? Hmm. Never. So you've been charged with you've been charged with a crime that you're you're pleading to here today, and it's <laughs> anyway. You're you're making an issue out of it that that I don't believe is going to be an issue. But I just want to make sure you understand what your obligation is. So that you don't get any trouble. I'm not trying to get you in any trouble, but you got to be clear. You're also going to do the anger management, right? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. 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 Yes, sir. Okay. This is being recorded. That's why. Yes, yeah. I agree with. Okay. That. You understand this is the final resolution of your case. The, the final resolution. No this trial. Is, this is. You're done. You're not going to a trial. This is done. You're, this is completely yeah, yes, resolving I this case. I understand. And you signed the plea and sentencing agreement, did you? Are you satisfied you got all your legal questions answered by your attorney? Okay. Yes, sir. Very good. Court will. Okay. Only one thing. Uh, da, 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 da. The, would you, did he, uh, he's pleading no, con no contest? Yes. Okay. And is it a withhold or an adjudication of guilt? It's a withhold, Your Honor. Would you? Check those two boxes off. Okay. Very good. So the court will order you on the six, uh, 12 months probation as well as the other, uh, the other terms of the plea agreement that are contained in this. Okay. Okay. Cost of supervision is waived, and you can check in with probation right now. I think. The defense in agreement on the score sheet. Yes, Your Honor. Randall Hardy. Casey Etheridge for Randall Hardy, and he would like to accept the state's offer. Uh, that This is a 21 CF 3063, um, and the um, it would be adjudication of guilt, six months of community control, followed by 18 months of probation, $515 in court costs, $150 cost of, super, um, of defense, $216.15 cost of transportation, a GPS monitor, um, at a dollar per day, and cost of supervision would be waived. That's a state's That's a agreement, state? Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Hardy, has he signed it? Yes, he's already signed it, yes. Okay. Mr. I Hardy, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court? Is the truth nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, sir. Just want to make sure you understand your plea, and it's free and voluntary. So you heard your attorney state the terms of the plea agreement. Is that your understanding of what the plea agreement is? Yes, sir. You have some question. You're hesitating. Do you have uh, a question? Think, yeah, I live in Alabama. Uh huh. I'm on probation in Alabama already. Okay. Am I going to be able to transfer? Good a question. After Hold the on. That's a good question. Your Honor, Alabama's not going to supervise him on community control as the state of Florida would supervise him. He wants to transfer out there to the state of Alabama under probation. They'll have to take him if he is. I don't know that him, him to be on probation in Alabama, that's what he's saying. Yeah, right. But if he is already actively on supervision in the state of Alabama, Alabama would have to take him. They won't supervise him on community control as Florida does. So the answer to your question is you've got to stay down here on community control for the six months. Right, that, 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 right. Then, I go, then I can go home? Yeah. Then, then with the caveats that Mr. Barry just said, that there's an active probation up there. And, you know, you, they would accept you, okay? So you have to keep in communication with him to get it transferred. So you're my yeah. probation officer? No. <laughs> but I, I mean, I work for the probation officer, and yeah. we'll certainly take right. care of whatever right. he's the boss. Okay. 
We all go find an address. They're gonna let me out to go find an address. Mm -hmm. How long do I got before I have to have an address? Is this a downward departure? It is, Your Honor, based on a legitimate on course plea. Mm -hmm. Would you counsel approach? Okay, so is the defense in agreement on the score sheet? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and we've had a discussion on the, as to the downward departure and some of the issues regarding the unique issues of this case. So you understand that by entering into this plea, you're resolving this issue, okay? And it'll be six months of community control followed by 18 months of probation. Community control, that's a higher level Basically, it's house arrest. Do you understand? Have you had to explain to you what community control is? Right. I, I'm under the impression that I have a couple of days before I find an address. Mm. I'm, 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 I don't want to. I'm, I'm, I'm not. <coughs> are you saying, are you homeless? Well, I live in Alabama. Yeah, so he's going to be here. Oh, homelessness in and by itself is not a violation of community control, Your Honor. All right. So, oh, okay. Just yeah, make sure you stay in touch with him. If he okay. lets us know he's going to be staying in a tent by the big oak tree, that's where he's going to be. That's going to be home, if you will. So I have a monitor. So. Probation is very creative <laughs> in, in assisting in finding these. We we recognize that there are some issues sometimes. You know, you know I mean, it, it it happens. So we'll we'll work with you. We want you to be. We want you to, you know, follow the rules, but we, will, you know, we're not trying to just trick you into something. Appreciate it. Your Honor, after I saw what he's on, the charge is, he's on for failing to register. Right. So he really has to find a place immediately right. by the big oak tree, if you will, <laughs> or wherever, because we're going to tell him to get over there to the sheriff's office and register mm -hmm. some address, whatever address it wants to be. Within 24 hours. Okay. Can you do that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we don't want to set you up for failure. We don't want you to say, you know, have a, have a requirement knowing that you ain't going to be able to do it. Well, I think it'll be all right. Okay. Okay. Very good. Based upon that, the court will accept your plea. And I see you've signed the back of it. Are you satisfied with your legal representation? Have you had all your legal questions answered? Yes, sir. Okay. So six months, community control, 18 months of probation following that. Then court cost, cost of transportation, the other things need to be paid within the terms of the plea, uh, within the terms of the probation. Okay. And your honor, uh, she didn't mention GPS, and we asked that that be at a dollar a day. Yes, I think, I think she said it that actually was was sure in there. Sorry. Thomas Harrell. <coughs> Thomas Harrell. We'll do Mr. Harrell and Harrison, and then we'll break for lunch. Okay. So we can
when you can get everybody. She's offering you 16.6 months of community control. Is, is that one of your inmates? Yes. Sir. Okay, definitely. We'll, we'll actually bring him out next. Thank you. Social Security Disability. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, the, the, um, yes, sir. The, 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 the GO has the rest of my documentation. The GO has the rest of my documentation. That is so ordered. And the most recent. One moment, Your Honor. Oh, they're talking would you go in and ask? Yes, Your Honor. It's Thomas Harrell. He's before the court on 21 CF 1044, 22 CF 85, and 20 CF 2190. And Your Honor, there, there is an offer on the table of 16.6 uh, .6 months of community control for these cases, and he would like to accept. Is that okay? Uh, no, my offer, oh. the offer is DOC. Oh, the okay. indication was that he had stage four colon cancer. If we can get some confirmation of that, we'd be willing to convert it over okay. to okay. a community control okay. sentence. Okay. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Yeah, yeah. The documentation okay. doesn't indicate that. So at this point, it's still the 16.9 yeah. okay. DOC. So you get the release. But okay. She could try to get a release okay. from him and, and get the confirm that. Okay. okay. So we'll come back on our next just regular... 629. And if you that's get fine. something, if we can bring it in. Get something fine. earlier and get it on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Continue to 629. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Which one are we bringing out, uh, Steve? Who do you want? Harrison. Casey Etheridge for um, Chadwick Harrison. We're here in 21 CF 1024 and 21 CF 2567. Um, and we'd be asking um, for a continuance, Your Honor, to the next pretrial date. And we would ask that the uh, state would leave the offer open so I could discuss it with him further in the case. Seems to be some miscommunication. Are you okay with keeping the offer open? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. The court will continue the case till 629, 9 o'clock in the morning, or pretrial. You know, yes, the, Your Honor. The, the offer will remain open based on the state's assurance until that time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Newton, what number is that? Number 5253 on your docket, Judge. Right. Charles Russell Public Defender's Office, Judge, this is Herman Newton. Case numbers are 21 CF 521 and 21 CF 2566. I spoke to Mr. Newton about the state's plea offer. He wanted to know about his credit. I've talked to the state attorneys. They're agreeable to setting this for Thursday for plea or continuance. I know that's jury review day, but I think we can take care of it then. Okay. We'll make this accommodation so we can try and get a resolution. See you. We'll come on jury review for plea or continuance. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Geddes? Yeah, Which what number is Geddes? Oh. oh, okay. Okay, Caleb Geddes. Okay, Your Honor, we're here in, um, right here. yeah, 
We're hearing a 2015 CF 870, Caleb Geddes. Um, and Mr. Geddes would like to, I guess, admit to the allegations in the affidavit. I believe that's the language. That is that a VOP? Yes, it is. Um, and um, the, it's a adjudication of guilt, credit for time served, with credit for all time served, including time since warrant was issued in, um, on October 7th of 2016. And to reinstate the probation, I guess that maybe it's modified, how, whatever, however they need to word it, uh, for two years to complete all original terms and conditions of the probation. State? That's the correct agreement, Your Honor. May I approach? Okay. Yeah, let's, let's get some clarification here sure. from probation to make sure it's worded sure. properly. We don't want to skirt over that. Your Honor, unfortunately, Mr. Geddes has passed his scheduled termination date of July the 23rd of 2021, so there is nothing to reinstate to. Okay. So would the correct language be to modify and extend probation two well, years? Revoke and start over. If that's cleaner. That's the easiest. <laughs> okay. I don't think it's going to prejudice him one way or the other. Okay. No, you just do that. Two years, right? So just, yeah, uh, revoke and terminate probation in two new years of probation to complete the original requirements okay. of the sex offender probation. Okay. And is there a, a GPS on that? I think that's kind of what he got violated for originally, so I know he had mm -hmm. it on before you were standing here today. So I yes. would assume that he's going to have to have it on. Defense, you in agreement? Ms. Etheridge, I do have the original terms here. Okay. Yes. Yeah. If I could just have a second, I'll be done in a second. Just modifying this real quick. The reason why I'm not acknowledging you is that you're not a party to this hearing. So you need to sit down, please. We've got to have the participants to participate. Okay. Your Honor, so would you like me to read all of the conditions again, I guess, into the record? Yeah, let's I... make sure we're, we're clear on it. Okay. So... So it would be um, revoke probation and sentenced to a new term of probation for two years, a GPS monitor, um, a sex offender evaluation and treatment if necessary. What do you mean if necessary? What does that mean? That's what the, I don't know, that's what it says. He gets the evaluation and based oh, on what the they evaluation. Right, They're right, in right. an evaluation if they follow whatever the recommendation. Yes, right. Judge. I didn't understand the wording. Sorry. And that's all right. No contact with the victim or her immediate family. And then may transfer probation to Escambia County where he can reside with his parents. And then is the early termination still on there? Are you going to not put that on there? No. Okay.
May I approach, Your Honor? I do. I do. I just don't oh, have one. But right. And for the record, Your Honor, I apologize. I don't have a clean score sheet, but he does score 23.7 months Department of Corrections. Will I, you make sure you can get it I uh, will submit filed that. so that it will yes. be a part of the court record? Thank you. So, Mr. Geddes, would you raise your right hand, sir? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Okay. Been a lot of discussion going on back and forth here, so I just want to make sure that two things. One, you understand what your what the new terms are, right? What you're agreeing to in this plea agreement. And second, that it's free and voluntary. Nobody twisted your arm, coerced you, okay? So first of all, let's make sure we understand. So this is violation of probation, so you're admitting the violation, correct? And there's an adjudication of guilt, credit for time served. For all time served, in, including since the time the warrant was issued on October 7th, 2016. So we're going to revoke probation and sentence to a new probation term of two years. Okay, that you're, you're with me, following me? GPS monitor, sex offender evaluation, you got to follow whatever the recommendations. No contact with the victim or the victim's family. Do we need to identify the victim? or not, or what does the victim's family mean? That's a, that's a vague term. Is it is the immediate family, is brothers and sisters, is extended family, Crestview? I don't know. What does that mean? Well, Your Honor, um, is that in the original plea agreement, perhaps? I think it says immediate family. Is that, is that a defined term, family? immediate family? No, yes. I'm not being facetious. I don't know. No, really. No, I, I understand, Your Honor. Me, I want to make sure it's clear yeah. so that he doesn't. I know so, what it means, sir. You know what it means? I know exactly what it means. I don't know that probation does. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you do. Well, what is it? I'd, I'd be interested to know because none of the it attorneys seem to know. The victim was my, was my little cousin. Yeah. And she's not immediate. So it's your victim is, was your cousin, so her immediate family is your family. Is, is, her, is her mother and her sister? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. I'm trying, hey, I'm trying to keep you so you don't inadvertently <coughs> violate. Yeah, I'm, I, I have no intent on contacting them. Who? The victim. And the victim's family? I mean, the, only one, I, the only person I talk to my family is my mother. Okay, if you contact the victim, I'm pretty sure you won't be in violation. Okay. If you're comfortable that you know it, I, I'm not particularly comfortable with it, but. <clears throat> and, Your Honor, given the age of the case, um, we don't have the underlying facts within our file, but when I submit the score sheet, I could include her initials and date of birth. Okay. To your assistant. Okay. Very good. And also, you'll get a chance to transfer to Scamby County for probation. And so because that's where you're going to reside with your parents. Okay, is that the understanding of the terms of the agreement? And I see you've signed the back of it, so have you gone over this plea agreement and made sure you had all your legal questions answered from your attorney? You comfortable? You understand what's going on? You understand this is a final resolution of your of the VOP, the violation of probation. And I have to go to trial, it's done. Okay. Very good. Based upon the, your testimony, the court will accept your plea agreement and sentence you to revoke probation and sentence to the new term of two years of probation with the other terms and conditions, especially the GPS monitor and no contact with the victim or the victim's family. And it says here, no unsupervised contact with the minors. What does that mean? The original terms. What does uh, no un unsupervised mean? Basically, I mean, you can't be alone with a minor? Yes, so obviously if he was in a store or something and there were other children there, that would not be a violation. But if he was alone with a child in a, in a certain place, then that would be a violation. You comfortable with that, counsel? Well, Your Honor, have a question. No, I just wanted to make sure that Yes. We're comfortable with that explanation. Okay. Very good. Court will... Uh... Your Honor, 
I think uh, she mentioned supervision fees were waived. Uh, we request the GPS be at a dollar a day and that he is to remain in custody until GPS is official. Court so orders on both counts, which be done today probably. So, okay. Questions, sir? Any questions? Thank you. Can we call Stephen Showers? Oh, we're going to break for lunch. You guys don't want to have lunch? I got two, please, Your Honor. If I could. You have any other way? You got these are all the inmates, right? We had three. Got three. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. And then the one that's coming back, Bennett is going to come back at two thirty. Okay. I'll take Domino if you got him. Your Honor, all this oh, matter, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, I'm sorry, Carl. That's Domino, all right. Number twenty-three. Yep. We're in negotiations with the state on this, Your Honor. I hope to have it resolved shortly. I just don't know how soon. Ms. Rivers and I were discussing one of those. Uh, so, what, what are you asking? I mean, we want to come back this afternoon or come back for another or do another? It? Another. Oh, so, we'll, why don't we do a regular continuance? And if you get it worked out, then you, we can set it on a special day. Thank you, Your Honor. So, we'll come back 629. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, uh, no, uh, sh uh, showers, please. Your Honor, present before the court is Stephen Showers. We are here for a uh, plea, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Showers has two cases, Your Honor. Um, they are, I'm sorry. Judge, one of them is 21 CF 2252. The other case is... 21 CF 219. And Your Honor, um, Mr. Showers is pleading to 44 months in the Department of Corrections, credit with the time served, and that standard fines and costs, and that 21 CF 219 would be uh, dismissed. That's your correct, Your Honor, and 21 CF 219. State would announce a null process based on the fact that the victim declined to prosecute. And as for the agreement in 21 CF 2252, uh, that is the agreement with the state. It is a, an uncoerced plea bargain, and the victim is um, has approved that offer. Now, the 44 months is for what charge? It's going to be for all four charges and it can be they can all run together concurrent with each other so each charge will be 44 months doc all run concurrent yes sir okay your honor may i approach you may. and then your honor um requested a placement but i'll go into that okay so and the defense is in agreement on the um uh, score sheet yes sir your honor and, Your Honor, because this is below guidelines, it's so based on the stipulated. Yes. Okay. Mr. Showers, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. So <clears throat> you heard the terms of the plea agreement, pretty straightforward. 44 months for each of the four charges in uh, 21 CF 252. Each of them will run concurrent. Okay, to run all at one time is so basically a total of 44 months, but they're for each of the four. Um, you also have a number of other court costs and whatnot. Um, will that go to, to collections immediately? Is that yes, how sir. we're going to handle that? Or? Yes, sir. You send it, send it to collections once okay. he's released. Very good. You will get credit for all time served, uh, and as a part of that, obviously, uh, 21 CF 219 is being dismissed by the state. 
Yes, sir. Is that your understanding of the plea agreement? Yes, sir. Now, I see here that one of your charges uh, has a 30-year maximum kidnapping. I just want to make sure you understand the maximum is part of the plea agreement, and obviously it's a downward departure. And the other, the other charges are all five years max. Yes, sir. So you're getting significantly less than that. And so, tell me why you're why you're uh, wanting this plea. I just feel like at the end of the day, it was the best scenario for myself and my future. Um, I can take this and come out of it a better person. Take the opportunities provided and. Uh, of it. And there will be an adjudication of guilt on all four of these charges. Do you understand that? That's important. Sorry. Have you had a chance to go over this with your attorney? Obviously, you've got a seasoned attorney. And uh, if you've been able to ask all your legal questions, make sure you understand kind of what, what the ram legal ramifications are on this. Yes, sir. Judge, count four was filed on as a direct file not too long ago. It is the state's intent to run um, each count to be coterminous with each other. If there's different credit on the, the counts, I'd like to have all counts run coterminous, giving him credit from the date of arrest. That was our understanding, Your Honor, of the plea. Okay, do we need to, that probably needs to put it in there? Is it? You can add it on there just to clarify Ms. so that we Once you put that on, that, that's a benefit for your client, and I think he probably... Thank you. Well, so you understand that by entering into this, you're, you know, you're this is basically a resolution of all your cases. Yes, sir. So that's a, you're not gonna, you're waiving the right. Technically, you're waiving the right to go to a trial and contest all these things. You believe it's in your best interest to do this? You want to over it. Anybody time. threaten or coerce you to get you to enter into this plea? Yes, sir. Any, anybody promise you anything other than what we've announced here in court? That's it. Are you satisfied with your legal representation on this case? Yes, sir. Okay. Based upon that, the court, based on that, the court will accept the plea agreement and will sentence you to 44 months. Department of Corrections on each of the four charges to be, uh, with, with credit for time served. Uh, these will all be served concurrently and. What's the technical language? Coterminous? Coterminous. 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 Yes, sir. So you get the maximum benefit for... Your Honor, time, um, Mr. So. Showers has requested that I ask if the court could recommend North Bay Correctional Facility. Mr. Showers has reviewed the programs. They have a CDL program and a welding program and a program that helps in what he believes would be helpful for his counseling, for his rehabilitation. He would ask if the court could recommend that placement. If, if you believe it would help, not sure it will help, but if you believe it will help, Mr. Shower, not opposed to that to me very strongly, Your Honor. Yeah, I'd be glad to do it, but uh, unfortunately, the the a lot of people don't realize, but. There's the judicial system, and then there's the executive branch. I'm aware, Your Honor, and I and would they don't it. And they don't listen to the executive branch I'm unless aware. there's a court order, and I can't court order this because I don't. Anything you can do to help me, anything yeah. that's going to be seen at classification would be at least. Very good. I'm glad to, glad to help. Hope, hopefully you make this a productive time. I know it's difficult, but uh, if you can, we, we, want, we want you to come out and be productive and and be a good citizen that's our goal okay thank you good luck right. your okay. shear okay. justin shear your honor okay shear. While Mr. Moore is finding what he's looking for <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mr. Gaddis yes has advised us that he has a 12 year old daughter he was requesting contact with his own kid. I don't know uh, what the state's position is on that, but we don't want him to get tied up in seeing his own kid in violation of supervision. I have no idea what, what, the, what, the, what the arrangement is, what the parenting arrangement is, if there's a DCF, there's an order. Somebody's got to give me some information. It does say 
provide contact with any minors except for his own children during the course of the state would be fine with that being the provision. That's exactly what we need. At the courts, okay, with that's what the agreement was, and they've been okay. operating on it as a okay. general rule. That's that's the way they, they handle these. Hold on a second, Mr. Shearer. Mr. Moore is. Justin Shear. Um, there was a little confusion about how to announce the plea. Hopefully, I've gotten it in a way that makes logical sense. <laughs> okay. That would be helpful. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, Mr. Shear is going to plea to. Um, there are three matters before the court today. Two of them are violation of probation in case. 2017 CF 1831, 2019 CF 2441, I'm sorry, 244, and then a plea in uh, 21 CF 1843. Um, Judge, what will happen is on count two of the 1843 will be null prost and that Mr. Shear will plea to a sentence of credit for time served in four years probation with a condition of probation that he attend a one-year rehabilitation facility, then that he will get the opportunity for early termination from probation. And that's what Hopefully that we are conveying here. So do we know what is that an inpatient? Do you have the program's name? Yes, the in name of the inpatient facility, Your Honor, is the Faith Farm. The what? Faith Farm Rehabilitation Facility. It is located in Okeechobee, Florida. We were on the phone with them Saturday from the has jail. He been accepted. I mean, and I he was know. accepted Saturday. Yes, sir. And, Your Honor, we are requesting a basically bars to bed on that bars so that bed. he remain in, uh, in OCJ until such a time as he can be transferred down there. Is that? Yes, sir. We explain that to Mr. Okay. Is that in your agreement? Your Honor, I will draft a separate transport order that will provide for him to be transported. There's a transport order that I prepared and I'll provide to the state to show that. Okay. And, Judge, typically... What we do is I make it a condition that if he doesn't get there within 10 hours of the end of stay, then it's that same condition. So okay. He can't call into the jail when he gets there. That's acceptable to the state, Your Honor. And we have reviewed the program, and as long as probation has no objection to it, then we have no objection to that program being utilized. Um, additionally, Your Honor, we do announce the null process of count two in 21 1843. Barry, questions from probation or comments? Judge, I have so many. <laughs> oh, good. Let's go. <laughs> uh, we can't be barged to bed if we're going to let him out to ride with Johnny Six Pack down there. Well, it's not barged to bed. It's something else. <coughs> it's all right what you're suggesting. The That's, state's agreed right. to it. It's okay. With but it's not barged to bed. bed. All right, Your Honor. Fine. Yeah. It's, it's whatever you're doing. Whatever this mom's in a transport based on agreement with the state. Yes, sir. Okay. So that that's... And I apologize. I didn't realize his mother was going to do it. So I maybe mispronounced that. Are, are you okay with we that? We are okay with that. Yes, Your Honor. As long as the conditions are met that everyone be notified right. when he gets there, that's not a problem. Okay. So this is conditional on the state approving the transport order. Yes, sir, and I will provide the And if there's training. a problem, we can bring it back and we'll argue about it. And yes, sir. Mr. Barry, is that, is, that, is that the only question? Well, Your Honor, I don't know that it, there will be a transport order. The 
way I'm understanding it is he's going back to the jailhouse and they're going to cut him loose. No, he would not be what, what allowed. Am I missing? When is the bed available, Mr. Moore? Is it available right now? Available today. Yes, sir. Judge, I just like to do a transport order. So, I mean, the jail likes a transport order, but if you don't want one, we'll. The, the jail's not going to transport. Your Honor, if he can be released today. Transport order is when the jail transports. What you're doing is, is basically the terms of the release. You're, you're instructing the jail, hey, release this person to his mother so that she can carry him over there. But. And we don't have any responsibility. Essentially, what I'm as long as the, your honor, if he can be released to his mother for transportation, we would have no objection to that, and that there be a time certain set that he must be there at the facility if they're ready to receive him, and if that's what you're putting on the record yes. that they're ready to receive him. Um, do you want to set it for Thursday instead, just yes. to make sure we've got it all? Yeah, yes. let's just reset this for Thursday so we make sure everything's ironed out, if, okay. if that's and acceptable. I, I told Mr. Sure I anticipated that, Your Honor. Let's just make sure okay. that we've got everybody in line, right. and if, if Mom can handle, can be available, then we'll have everybody ready to go on Thursday, and there's no questions. I was under the impression it was a bars to bed, and it's going to be a transfer. I'm sorry. You know, okay. It's okay. We'll, we'll take care of it. We'll get him there. He wants to go. Let's get him there. Thank you. Okay. So we'll come back on 5-5. On, uh, five, five. Yes, sir. And we'll have everything down. I mean, we can. That's Thursday? Yes. Yeah. I mean... Uh, We've got arraignments in the afternoon, so yes, we'll be here in the afternoon. So we want to do it in the in the afternoon. I'm just sorry, Judge. I got a four-hour. <coughs> Moore, you're a busy man. I, Tell you what, I am in too much court, Your Honor. Okay. Five five, then Your Honor, in the afternoon. Okay. Take care of it. We'll have it all in writing, right, Mr. Moore? So I'm going to give you this back, Mr. Yes, Moore, okay. so you can. Clean it up and uh, <laughs> Thank you. And we thank Mr. Barry for raising those questions so we can yes, want to have it <laughs> want to have it have it tight. And your honor, obviously he'd have to be transferred to probation wherever the facility is. It's in Okeechobee County. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Barry. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That is all I have, fortunately, for I the court. I did speak with Mr. Shaw, if I may approach. And he has Michael Whitfield, which was on the docket. Yeah. What happened to Mr. Shaw? We have the specially set case, and then we'll do okay. the rest of these cases. Your Honor, if I may just briefly address Damian Crooks again. He was the case that we set the VOP on. So Friday. the case at 130 is Janice Porter. That's the 130 case. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go um, ahead. I spoke with uh, Mr. Harper on Damian Crooks. This was the case that you gave the 518 date. Right. Um, my secretary is actually watching Press Court TV, and... <laughs> that I have depositions that day, all day. You 
I spoke with Mr. Harper, and he has no objection to moving that case to another VOP date. Um, <clears throat> yeah, problem is we've Are there any other dates that I don't know? The problem is we're it's about an hour long hearing, is that what you said? Yes, Judge. What do we have on our ninth and thirtieth days in the afternoon?
We'll begin with the. I can find it here. Janice Porter. All the less you for the state, Judge. Good afternoon, sir. John Lapella for the defense, Your Honor, with Ms. Porter is present. This case was set for a hearing by the court uh, regarding motion to disclose documentation and also uh, the issue of the protective order, which the state is seeking. So have there been conversations regarding these issues? Yes, Judge. I mean, when, we, when we left originally, it was... The state was agreeing to provide the information and there was just some questions about wording and then all of a sudden, I, I don't know where that, I don't know how that ended up to where we're at today. Judge. Uh, just kind of trying to frame where we are at. My understanding is that they were requesting additional items that were used by the forensic accountant to create a summary. Uh, the state has, I believe, turned over all those. We're talking about 15 different amended discoveries. We sent over those documents after speaking with the victims. They had wanted a protective order on those, on the, basically the client names, details of that nature. And I thought we were in agreement too. The question of how the language is gonna happen, I wasn't exactly sure. I presented a proposed order. It was objected to. Talking with the victims, we went ahead and sent over that information in a way to not delay it any further. Um, we have provided what I believe is everything, but I think we're still, I'm talking with Mr. LaPella briefly now, I think there's still some questions that he has about all the documentations. It sounds like we may need to sit down and, and ferret out exactly those details. Um, that's where we're at. I think the order is proper to prevent further disclosure of these ledgers, it's law firm ledgers, um, but they have been provided over in the 15th discovery. I think everything has been provided. That's the state's position at this time. Mr. Lapel, what's your understanding of where we're at today? Your Honor, um, I did send over a correspondence uh, via email to the court last week um, at it. the court's I request. It. The, it was supposed to actually be a filing, but it was well, an email, but I, I assume it was filed also. Well, was Judge, it filed? I, I'm, I did not file it, Judge. You should have filed it. The, Don't send me some on, on the case of this magnitude without filing it. Yeah, everything needs to be filed. Does the go state, ahead. Well, Judge, is the state required to send over their correspondence with the court when they send a motion directly to I'm the not judge? Asking, I'm not asking. This is not a okay. convert. I said last time to file something. At the last meeting, we, I asked to file, and you sent an email. Anyway, well, I'm just asking. The state when, filed an email as well, Judge, with the motion attached to it. Okay. We e-filed right. our motion, and we wanted to set it for a hearing, which we anticipated would be today. Okay. And it was set today. Um, so can you respond to the state basically saying they provided everything? Do well, you feel like you haven't? So here's, here's, I think the court needs to have the understanding of like the backstory a little bit, a little sure. bit. So the allegation came out initially that my client had, had misappropriated a number, amount of, uh, quite a bit of funds from their firm. Um, and that number started off at uh, 200,000. Then it kept on going up and up and up. Um, over time, they've also determined, the state has actually, that there's a, a person by the name of James Morgan who had actually misappropriated funds from the firm as well. That the state is not um, seeking any type of charges against. Um, so then we determine that there's differentiation between Mr. Morgan's misappropriated funds and my clients and there's some possibility that they're if we're not looking at to a penny, you know, are these funds that are you know, being attributed to her or to him, and what are these purchases for? Um, then it became, the numbers kept going up, um, and then they started looking into whether or not my client made any uh, inappropriate credit card purchases with her uh, firm-issued credit card. Um, then we had a deposition of Ben Kincaid, who is, uh, after the state supplied us with a summary of Basically, all of the 
allegations which alleged that my client has taken around 595000 And we did a deposition. We got those, that summary from them. Um, then, the, then the question is, um, well, if they're alleging that she misappropriated funds by using a firm credit card to make a purchase at Sam's Club or Walmart, what was the determination to, deter to find out if that was a, a, an invalid charge or not? Well, in order for us to do our job, Judge, we need to know as much as we can about that purchase. It can't just be unilaterally decided upon by the alleged victim and the state that that was a bad charge when she's made a number of purchases on behalf of the firm for a variety of things because she was basically the, she ran the firm on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we've got the summaries. We're, we've been going through those. It's an ongoing process. There's, a, there's thousands of pages of documents. And then when we review those things, we talk to my client, we talk to our forensic accountant, and we look at it. And what are the things that we need to be able to be prepared to go to trial if the state's alleging that my client has taken, you know, $10 here, $500 here, $1,000 here, and all of those purchases are relevant. And the state has to provide proof of each one of these charges. We're not going to rely on just a summary, and that's not appropriate for, for the court to do or for the state to present to a jury. So the state has supplied us with some additional, um, with a di additional discovery just recently. After reviewing that, I believe there's a few more things that we still need to be complete. Um, and after I confirm with my expert that we have everything that we need. So the, the process is we get everything from the state. I give it to my expert to review. We review it. And then we know what we're missing. And if we have everything, we'll confirm that, and then we'll be ready to go forward. We also have to prepare for trial if we're going to have a trial. Um, I will say what we are still, what, what, at this point in time, what I believe we still need would be, and this is not in necessarily, some of it is in the motion, but I think there's one additional that I'd add, or tennis. But in the motion, we're asking for receipts. Any receipts that are, have been, that the firm has in their uh, custody or control, um, that could be exculpatory to our client, my client. Um, those could be for anything from office supplies to whatever. Um, if they were possibly on the, uh, the, allegate, the date of the allegation, then that could be exculpatory. And if they're in their, if th those are in what, their possession. What do you mean by receipts that are exculpatory? So th that's, so like say she's alleged to have stolen from Walmart by using the credit card from the firm. Well, if we know what was purchased, then we would know if that was a, you know, a misappropriated charge or not. If, the, if they have in their possession the, the receipt, then that is exculpatory information potentially. Um, the other thing after discussing it with my client would also be the calendar, the, the office calendar. If there was, there's an allegation that um, there was an inappropriate charge, like I think of a hotel or resort or possibly food entertainment type of thing, whether we, if we knew what was going on in the firm that day, if there was a party or if there was a deposition out of state or out of county that, where there was food or lodging that needed to be done, that, that could be exculpatory as well. So I think the office calendar, the receipts, we have the summaries of the ledgers that we assume are from QuickBooks. We don't actually have the QuickBooks data files, and I think we would need those to be able to review by our forensic accountant. Um, anything that has printouts of transactions as well. So if something was purchased through Amazon, not just the Amazon, like the billing statement necessarily, but the actual receipt, those things are all Findable. Uh, I know that when I buy something from Amazon, I can go back and track every one of my purchases that I've made that I think I, you know, from the history of my opening the account. Um, if the firm has an Amazon account, then every purchase that was made on Amazon could be then tracked and known exactly not just how much it was, but what it was actually purchased. Just saying if there's are, a... Are, is there an Amazon account for the firm? I believe there was an Amazon account. And that's some of the allegations that some of the purchases were made um, by my client through Amazon. 
The summaries that were the summary. Hold on a second. Let me. Just a question I had. When was your summary filed? Judge, there's a summary. It looks like an amended summary filed on February 15th. Okay, February 15th. That's, it. That's what I was looking for. Yes, Judge. Okay, That's so just so I kind of just get a lay of the land a little bit. There are, it, it says here, I'm just starting at the top, Choctaw Electric. Are those allegations that those were her personal accounts or firm accounts? Those are her personal accounts, Judge. Okay. I think there's a difference in, quite frankly, this summary proof is uh, personal accounts, her personal credit card. What's been going through the forensic accountant is, I might, you know, I might be incorrect on this, but that's my understanding. It's charges that are made on a company card or on some other details that are not included in that's this That's what I was wondering, proof. because they have a whole stuff, you know, as Chase Disney Visa, and it has an account number, and it has Janice Porter next to it. I, and I just wasn't clear, or those, and everybody keeps talking about firm. Was that a firm account that that she was using? Is that is that My understanding on money this. that was paid out of the account, alle out, allegedly? My understanding is that these are personal credit cards that are paid out from the operating business account, the okay. bank account. Okay. And I believe the state can prove the case with just this summary, frankly. So that's what I was kind of wondering. So do you disagree with that? I mean, just um, allegedly. I so mean, if it was are, an you, are these, so when you talk about accounts and where they were, the Sam's Club and all that, is that contained in this summary? Is it another something else? Yes, it is, actually. Okay. Well, There's, so help, help me out with that. So, like I said, when the case has kind of evolved a little bit, the first allegation was that they had issue with things that were transferred into. I understand, but let me, let's just follow, just help me understand the okay. background. I'll, I'll let so, you argue all you want, but. Um, for instance, um, Schedule C, I believe it is. Hey, I'm, I'm looking on the amended notice for the summary proof. Are, and I'm asking about that. Are, are those, some of those like firm accounts? There's, there's three pages. Not Which even page three pages. That? I might be able to. Sure. You're looking at the. Uh, I'm looking at the uh, February 15th. It's just a three page filing. I'm just trying to kind of understand what. What's the date on that, Judge? February fifteenth, the filing. Twenty twenty two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've got I've got the supp the summary as well. I so some of the items on that sheet, Judge, I believe are are credit card charges. Um, but but are these your clients' credit cards or the firm's credit cards or is there? The firm credit card that's issued with her name on it that is assigned to her, I believe. It's a firm assigned card, but it's the firm's credit account. 
Is that correct? One moment, Judge. Yeah, sure. go ahead. The summary is I went over back with the victim and or the alleged victim in the case. They're indicating that these are her personal accounts. These are not there. There's only one credit card that ever had their name on it. It was a simple Chase card, not a Chase Disney, not a commodity, not a uh, any of these other ones that are in this sub, uh, summary proof. So that's that's our understanding of it. Okay. Okay. So may, is, there, is there another summary that you, because you've been talking about account, you know, accounts that, you know, credit cards. Is there, is there another summary right. that's been filed? Yes. It's not been filed with the court. Oh. It's been filed there's, as reciprocal. There's a forensic accountant's review of this that's not filed with the court, not a notice of summary, but it's a forensic accountant's review of the entire record. Uh, I'm not sure states will use all of that, frankly. Um, but I think Mr. Lapella thinks some of that is potentially exculpatory. It's been brought, given entirely over everything that we could possibly give to him in abundance of caution. And, and, and more importantly, Judge, it's included in what the state's seeking in restitution, which is, like I said, 595000 a lot of money. Um, the state might say, well, we can prove 100000 but if the allegation is 595000 then if we're going to have a trial, we need to know exactly what, like, like in a statement of particulars or something where this, we know exactly what the state's trying to prove. We can't just say, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we think we can prove a lot, but it could be as much as 595,000. How do I defend that? Um, how does the court determine restitution when the time comes, if the time comes? Well, let me just ask you one and just sure. stay, because you brought up the point, restitution is obviously maybe a big issue. Um, well, ultimately, it will be if, at some point, if potentially. Um, is, is, is this the primary issue that we're dealing with, or is it proofish? Because, for instance, I'm just using what you just said. Hey, this is all we need right here. We just need this right here. This will prove up our case fine, as far as the basic underlying facts. In other words, what I'm saying is there's really more than one issue. There's the, the elements necessary to prove the crime, which is what the state has to prove beyond reasonable doubt. And then there's the, uh, the, the issue of restitution, which may not be entirely, you may not have to go over all the issues of restitution in the primary case. Right? Um, do we need to have all this done, or, is, or are we getting the cart before the horse? My, my well, question. Judge, here's my, my quandary is I'm the defense lawyer. I'm representing my client. I can't concede my client's guilt. I can't do that. I, I can't say, Judge, we're really more concerned about restitution. I think that'd be improper. Um, at this point, where we're at is the state's alleging a number of, of, of stolen funds. They're saying they can prove a percentage of that beyond a reasonable doubt. They think they believe they can do that. Okay. Fine, they can charge her that way. Um, but if the allegation is 695000 and whatever sense, then we're entitled, due process requires us to be able to defend that number if that's the allegation. It, like I said, they, if they're alleging that to a jury and the court's going to make findings of that. The, the, I mean, the question is what, what is the state's position on where This is an entire very good when, when you get down to the, to, to the proofs, this is, uh, has a lot of business elements. I'm familiar with business cases. And it can get to be, quite frankly, a lot more detail than we normally deal with in the criminal courts. I think that's a fair statement. I don't, yes. You know, except 
you know. Uh, Russ Edgars, he used to always, he, he, he was the go-to guy in the state attorney's office. He did all the, all the, the these type of cases um, because they are unique in, in the detail that is required. So we're trying to figure out what's necessary to go to trial. That's, that's our issue. And then do we have to do everything in advance or, you know, kind of what, what is the, the position of the state? I mean, you're obviously working with, uh, I mean, you, you're, you're dealing with your end of it as far as the proofs. Kind of where, where are we at? What, what's your response to the defense saying, you've alleged what, 595, you got to give me what you got. Right? You got to show me what your proofs are, so I might be able to defend it, or you know, right? Yes, Judge. The charges are uh, it's three counts of money laundering, one count of organized fraud. The state only has to prove over five fifty thousand dollars of organized fraud. Only has to prove between or over twenty thousand uh, dollars in money laundering. I believe we can do that. The question of restitution, I think, is the issue at hand on, on this. Mr. Lapella does not agree with the amount that has been alleged basically through the forensic accountant. Um, does the restitution have to be addressed prior to the proving of the case? That's what I was getting at before. I, that was the question that I was trying to frame. Uh, I, and I basically, I heard Mr. Lapella, he didn't say exactly like it, but I'm, and I don't mean to put words in your mouth. I said, no, it's, you got to prove both of it. You got to prove all the restitution. You got to prove what? You got to prove the elements of the case. If you're saying 595, you got to prove 595. I don't believe that that's necessarily the case, but if we're seeking $500,000, we need to prove it. At a restitution hearing, you don't have to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt even. Um, so that's the state's position that we can, pro we can prove the elements that we have so far. There's a question of restitution at a time. I think we might be open to stipulate to something. I don't have a hard number other than what we are, our forensic accountant has given. I think Mr. LaPelle is looking for an opportunity to review that, which I understand, um, but I need to know what documents he thinks he needs if I'm going to provide that, because I think we provided everything. Uh, right now, I finally got that there's receipts that are requested, a calendar. I think these are things that we can provide if he so requests it, and we might be able to reach a stipulation on restitution. But as far as the state's concerned, I think we can prove it without having to go into those matters. That's the state's position, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Well, that, was, that was the nature of my question. What's your response? We have, to we have a right to process? challenge the allegation, Judge, and I think that's due process. If the state's allegation is a number, then that's, we have a right to, to challenge that. I, I, I think it would be a violation of due process for the state to be able to say, um, like I said, argue to the jury, argue to the court a number, and then say, you know, and not be able to... Um, to prove it, and then in advance of a plea of no contest, and then what? We have the allegation that she took a certain amount of money, and and then the court's going to award full restitution. I mean, well, there's a lot of different ways to, to look at it. I mean, the, the you know, if the state, just for argument's sake, if the, st if the state says, "Look, this is a complex case," I mean, just for arguments, I'm not mm -hmm. saying there's anything. I just use the figure that the state just said. State just said, "Look, we've got just this with the summer we've got right here, two hundred grand. We can prove that. That's all we need to prove that meets our elements." Then they're, they're not seeking. They're not. They're, they're not uh, alleging five hundred ninety-five. They're just alleging that something over the threshold to prove their crime. Is that inappropriate. I mean, is that something that you keep going back and saying that it's the lack of due process? That's a great. Okay, I mean, I, that's maybe not the best argument. The best <laughs> thing I can say is this: we can always argue due process. That's the go-to. So, you know, if we what would be a due process issue is if the state was going to offer up a summary mm -hmm. and saying, well, based on this, we come up with all of these summaries of expenses that were improper. When I deposed Ben Kincaid, I said, how did you determine that? And he said it was an internal investigation that they did with the firm, and they determined that a May 27, 2019 Walmart purchase in Niceville for $327 was inappropriate. How did you determine that? 
Well, we looked at the dates, we looked at the calendar, we looked at the times, and we figured that that was probably not a good purchase for the firm. Do you have a receipt for that? That's what I want to know. Um, in addition, like I said, the state can't present summaries. Even in the, I received a letter from the alleged uh, victims from the Brandon firm, and it even says that um, source doc, they're referring to source documentation, capital S, capital D, and alleging that we haven't requested it yet, but we're saying that in, for the state to present that to a jury in terms of evidence, that source documentation is what is necessary to prove the case. That's discover, it's not just discoverable, that's discovery. Um, and so it's not that we have to request those records, those are things that the state should just give us. And I think they're acknowledging that the source documentation has not been disclosed by their own letter, mm -hmm. which would be the QuickBooks data files. Um, it's not, it's, it's, it's not attorney's approach. Mm -hmm. So the state is needing the specifics. So you, you, there are a few things that you say that you need. And it, it looks like just informally discussing, as Mr. Gillespie asked to kind of go back to the source, and you know, because this, again, is complicated to figure out whether he's got, but he doesn't think there's a lot that's out there. So it seems to me that what we need, by a date certain, is a final a requ a discovery request in detail so that Mr. Gillespie can get a, a response to you, which he thinks can be gotten relatively quickly. And you've stated, and I'll put on the record, that you know Mr. Gillespie has been very cooperative in trying to exchange these, and I appreciate that. Um, you know, we don't hide the ball anymore. That's Practice of law is different now than it used to be. So we want to try and get that, but. Um, I, can, I can put that on the record, Your Honor, and then I can also provide the court with a filing, a, requ a specific request. I, I just don't I just know want, if the state's uh, the, the only thing, I, I think it's better, you're welcome to 
whatever we can do to short circuit it, put it on the record right now, but make a formal writing because we're trying to paper this, right? That, that's why I asked for runes, not that I'm trying to make, <laughs> make lawyers' lives more difficult. I know it takes time to do filings. I want to make sure and paper this. There's already a lot of paper in this file. And um, these kind of cases are sometimes appealed. And we want to make sure that we give the appellate court what they need to make a determination about any appeal. So, so one, one would just, what I what I would because the what's right behind this request is, you know, a continuance. That was where what led us to this originally. Is when we were coming, were we going to continue this because? Victims have rights to speak, and they spoke at the last hearing and made a pretty strong case, quite frankly, that we need to move this case forward, and there's been a lot of, a lot of continuances. If we hadn't had COVID, we also wouldn't be dealing with this, certainly not with in the cooperative fashion we are now. So what I would propose is that we... Um, not only if, because I assume you're wanting to continue this, because we are here at docket day. It's one of the things to do, continue. What are we doing for our next um, trial cycle, which is day after, uh, week after next? I'm, I'm assuming you're not. Actually, yeah, it's next I, week. Defense is not prepared to go to trial. I understand that. I understand these that. Issues. I know. I, but I wanted to put it on the record that you weren't. And... There are sufficient details required that I want. I want this case to get resolved. Like all of them, we're working hard. Everyone's working hard. If you know, all you had to do is sit through pre-trial and uh, docket day to day to realize that people on both sides of the fence are working hard on their cases, and I really appreciate that. And we're really trying to back to un unlock the the backlog of of cases. It's for everybody's benefit and to treat everybody fairly. Um, what I would like to do, so I'm going to grant, I'm, we're going to go ahead and continue this to our uh, June 27th pretrial. But in the interim, we're going to have some case management conferences in order to make sure that all the discovery is being said. Because what I really don't want to do is for whatever reason, to come back here a month and a half from now and feel like we still don't have the information, the discovery to be able to proceed forward. And, I, and honestly, I, I think it will, you know, move us toward a resolution in, at, at different levels, to different potential resolutions. So, so... Let's let's come up with some specifics. So the there court's going to grant the motion to continue. June twenty seventh is our next pretrial. That's our official our stuff. So now let's look at so our, our date. Can you? Uh, we'll go through. You can walk through today. We'll you know put some things on the record, but. When do you want to have a file? And by the end of this week, just any any discovery request. Well, I, I think if and I'll, can I just put on the record what the I think there's four to five sure. things. Mm -hmm. um, it would be the receipts, any receipts. Uh, any of any uh, suspect purchases? Of, um, of what? Any receipts? Of? If receipts. there's any suspect purchases on the Suspect those purchase, okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand that. Um, the actual source material, which would I'd assume would be the QuickBooks data um, files. Um, any transactional accounts, such as what would have been purchased, if, that's, if it's locatable, like Amazon, um, uh, what was actually purchased with the account, it'd be a... It'd be a transactional record of the purchases uh, from that particular account. 
Um, well, and not you yeah. don't need all those guys. You just want the ones that the state is a, a, a term you use as suspect. In other words, the state mm -hmm. might be saying these are inappropriate. We believe these are somebody's going to testify that these are are not appropriate or may have been right. misappropriate or whatever. Right, and I think as long as that is we're, what's in this, what's it, what tracks with what the discovery says, what the summary say uh, is an, uh, and Ben can say. Ben Kincaid said this is a improper transaction. If it's a stapler and they have the ability to confirm that it was a stapler that was bought on that particular day that they said in the record is improper, then if they have that record, then I think it would be potentially exculpatory and discoverable. So yes, that's what we're looking for. Um, but I think that's, that rounds it out. I think it's transactional records, receipts of those transactions or uh, paper receipts, um, sometimes receipts are actually downloaded into, uh, they're scanned and then downloaded into another receipt file. I do that in my firm. Um, and then source material, QuickBooks data files, and any um, transactional um, computations, the, the homework that was done by the C, uh, CRI, if there's any, um, basically showing his work. That's basically what we're looking at. And I can reduce that to writing. That, that I think that should satisfy. Okay. Let and me, I, don't, uh, I don't know how long that would take them to put together, Judge. You're going to put that down in writing, though, just so for precision, Mr. I will. If the court would like me to, I would. Yes, absolutely. I would, just, just so we can paper it. Um, and Judge, uh, yes. Sorry. No, if, no. if we can get a specific date to have that done by, and then um, additionally, um, some ruling on the protective order. When when we give this, the victims are very uh, adamant that there's lots of details about their law firm. There's lots of details about third party clients in these ledgers. I've provided that. They allowed me to do that, but they were very adamant about having that protective order, and I think that's allowable by the statute. Um, I have to get the cart before the horse, but that's. Uh, I want to make sure we. Didn't leave today without that. Mr. Lapello. I agree with the state that if I, um, that the protective order issue should be addressed probably prior to its disclose, the disclosure of the items. Um, we don't want to. Sounds like they've already items. disclosed the items, and they're looking for a, they're looking for a protective order as to how it would be disseminated. I believe my understanding of when I'm reading the motion. It, for the, from the state is that the materials that they've already provided to us may fall into that category that would be protected. So it could be discovery that we've already received already. Well, that's what he just said. He just said he gave you a bunch. He gave you everything that, they had. going to fall within the protective order as well as anything that's coming forward. Okay. And then whether or so not that would impair our ability to do our job. Right. So have you, and which is where I thought we were at, I'm now I'm going back to our last hearing where I thought we were at and that is working out the language of that protective order. Are you in disagreement with what the state has proposed, and what is it? And we can do one. We can do one thing. I'll, I'll give you guys another shot to do what I asked. You know what I wanted you to do before, and that is try and work it out. But this time, if we can't work it out, we need to be back. You know, next week and try and with proposed orders or whatever so I can help you guys resolve this. Judge, to be frank, um, I don't want to stipulate to something that could impair my client's ability to defend her case. Okay. Um, so you want their proposal and I'll just make a ruling? Well, and I'd, if I could just be heard on some of the concerns we have on the, on the issue of the protect order, which I... Um, we're concerned about it being overly broad or overly vague. Um, I don't. Why, why don't you put it in writing so that I can really look at? If you give it to me now, I'm going to have to be making a ruling on that. And this stuff can be nuanced. And I want to make a good ruling. So that's, we're not. And that's why I thought we, that's what we were, we're going to address today in court is. 
the nuances of but you, what's but you going did, on. And I asked you to file something that you objected to, and you did not. Now, that's why I was a little bit, when you sent me the email, basically saying I got problems with it, but you didn't send me what you're what you wanted. And, and Judge, I've been practicing a number of years. The court knows that. I've never had a court ask me what the specific objections are, like via email, to say, what are the object? Now, if I object, then I, file, I, I can file an objection, or we can indicate the, uh, it's a, it's a, like a stipulation situation. We say, no, we object to this bond, or we object to whatever. And then we set it for a hearing if we don't agree. That's the way criminal court works, in my understanding. Um, it's new to me to, if I'm required to file a written objection as to the basis of the state's motion that the state's seeking. Um, and the basis for that objection besides just objecting. Mr. Gillespie, how do you? Judge, the, uh, the state's provided a, a draft protective order that we believe is, is, encompasses what we are looking to achieve with this. Um, it, Mr. Lupella defense objects. I don't know of any other way to handle it other than to have you address the language of it. Um, specifically, um, I'm, I'm fine with the language of it. I believe the victims are fine with the language of it that I provided. Draft on that. So you you just want to comment on their draft and leave it at that. That's what you're how you're proposing to re, to I'm have. I'm okay there. with doing that, Judge, and um, and that's what I was planning to do today. Okay. Go ahead. Do I, do I have the the state's newest? Um, uh, proposed order. <laughs> Let me make sure which one it is here. Is it the same? Excuse me, Your Honor. We're okay, Judge. If we go down, there's seven points. Tell, let's see. When did you file it? Did you file the a draft? Or if not, do you have an extra copy for walking, tracking through it? Filed the motion. I think the proposed order went to your JA, if I can approach it. You, anything you want to add to this, Mr. Gillespie? No, Judge. Mr. Lapel, what's your objection to this protective order? A number two, Your Honor, it says the information material should not be photocopied or reproduced in, by any means without further order of the court. Um, we've already, we've had to photocopy, as I have right here, photocopies of, of file, of the file, of, of statements uh, that I've had my, my staff review um, our forensic um, accountant review. Um, so if the court granted that motion and says we can't, we can't photocopy anything, we can't reproduce it, then that's a problem because <laughs> we've already violated the protective order if that, before it's even gone in place. I need to be able to disseminate the materials to at least my account, man, uh, my account review people um, and possibly an investigator if we're investigating anything in the case. Um, I can't be hand strung on, on dissemination, understanding that the, protection, the protective order would apply to anyone uh, touching the file. So if they worked on it, then they couldn't, it'd be like a non-disclosure uh, type of thing, where they wouldn't be able to disclose it to the public, which I understand that. Obviously, the state can redact any, um, anything that is non-relevant and otherwise protected. Uh, like a client's name, perhaps, um, or abbreviate that name. But um, I got to be able to make copies. I don't work just in a purely digital sense, and I got to be able to email things um, or Dropbox them to my expert. So that, that one there is just overly broad. Judge, I spoke with the victim just now. I think we can remove that one as number two can be removed. Okay. No objection to number three. What about number one? 
think it's a little bit vague. Um, obviously, we'd still be asking for the, be able, to be able to have our witnesses, experts review the documents. Um, okay. Number that would, one, that would be my my staff there, as well. Yeah, Judge, I think it. I think number one is fine. It's. Uh, needs to stay, it's basically keeping in confidence to the parties involved. Can't disseminate it to outside other parties, third parties, or anything else, just the defense counsel. There's a specific exception for experts, which, again, he can do that, but it's still within the defenses. He's not giving it to someone else, civil litigation or something else going on. I think that's the state's position on that. I don't think we would be looking to do that, Judge. So then it would be, I mean, obviously you've got to show it to your experts. So in there, they have certain requirements to maintain it, right? So, so is that okay? That's fine. Okay. Number four. I think that has to do with third parties that would examine it. I'm not sure. It's a Seems little. Like it it's runs a little parallel off. to number one. So yes, it's basically a different way of saying number one. We would just ask that the that it, if it's going to mirror number one, that it includes staff, experts, and, and anyone affiliated with the firm directly under, um, for the purposes of Is it counsel this case. or counsel's staff? Staff, experts, or, or any... Well, experts are separate. They, they're okay. covered separately. Well, so count... The only folks that we would possibly be needing would be experts or investigators that work for our firm or that I subcontract out for. How do you want to put that... Put that in there. So their counsel, staff, I mean, I don't know exactly what to say. I understand what you're doing, like an investigator. Maybe that person, that would be a part. I mean, you could argue that that's a part of your staff, but they're not technically a part of your staff. They're, they're not in-house. Contractor, you know. Or I think something along the lines of staff or agent would, would, would staff work. Staff or agent of the counsel? Mm -hmm. Okay, how about that? Staff or agent? Of this guy. That's good. I like that. Agent and counsel. And this goes for both this goes for both sides, so the states bound by the same thing. Okay, what about number five? Part in there it says the defense must first obtain written statement by the experts to comply with the protective order. Mm -hmm. Um, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on. Are these covered under the rules and the four experts, or is it this is require separate language to bind the experts? I'm not sure, Judge. Frankly, I'd have to. Honest answer. I've never, I've never had this issue come up in a long, in, in, that I can remember, Judge. Um, like I said, our main concern is liability. We don't want to unwittingly violate the protective order and be held in contempt. So what about number six? That's just kind of a. Yeah. I think there's just one typo at the end, at the end of the sentence. At trial. Oh. At trial of any evidence. I'm sure. Okay, so what we need to do is to, um, number five, I would ask that uh, you all either come to some agreement on how to word the experts as it relates to the, the rule or um, 
or provide the court with uh, alternative language and, and arguments for, I'm asking you to brief that issue if you can't come to agreement on how to deal with experts. That's number five. The rest of it, you all have agreed to and Number seven, just, just be clear, and then it's number seven. Number seven could be an issue, Judge. Um, I think I think on number no, seven. No, 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 number five. Number five. Number five deals with experts. Did I miss something? My mind says number five. That, that's correct, Judge. Uh, but you're also saying, in addition, number seven has a problem? I think Mr. Lupala yeah. may have an issue with number well, seven. I'm, I'm focused, sorry. Okay, we'll jump to seven. But as to five. Understood. That's what we're doing on five. You got that, Mr. Lupala? Brief the uh, reasons. Either work, try and work out the language. If you can't, each provide me language and argue why support your language. Is that okay, Mr. LaPelle? Did fine, you put Judge. that in writing? Or we may come back here and argue it verbally. My, it's my, uh, it's, it's my uh, work in the civil arena, say, you know, if I know how you guys operate. And I don't do any work in the civil arena, so. Okay. So number seven. Judge, I, I believe that we, my office maintains records of all the file, all the documentation of a file for at least five years. I don't, I think that based on the rules of criminal procedure, since the two-year mark is, a, is the deadline for ineffective assistance, that I'd have to maintain the records for two years at a bare minimum in order to address anything that could come out of an ineffective assistance claim. Um, I, I think there's a fairly easy fix on this, but I'm, I'm thinking it, Mr. It Gillespie's going to probably offer it right now. It might be that uh, Judge destroy or maintain those records as provided uh, by the court of, uh, attorney of record for the, whatever statutory required time. Well, the attorney, you can you can keep the stuff, but you got to gather it in from all your experts, and you need to kind of pull it back in to where you have a copy of it. But so you can keep copies of it, uh, but. The other people you've distributed to outside of your firm, whether it be a contractor or you need to get it back. That's reasonable, and they just don't want it floating around out there. We can put the language. Perhaps uh, the attorney shall keep those as attorney of record, as provided by statute, or something along those lines. I don't. Or, the only the only concern I have about that, because this is unprecedented from where I am, it's, it's a interesting mental um, challenge. <laughs> what if we have a trial? and we call experts. Those experts testify. They have records and reports that they've used. Um, at the close of the trial, then they destroy everything that they have. What if we come back on appeal and we have to retry the case? And they have to reconstruct their entire records? That's the concern I've got. Um, I think it would be prudent to do that upon, upon exhausting any appellate issues um, or at the close of a two-year mark, um, I've obviously the the non-disclosure and the protective order would remain in place for infinity. I suppose there's no there's nothing that would ever cancel this order. I just don't I don't want to create a problem that could come up or come about in in three four years or something. And then be ineffective assistance, basically. I'm not quite following you on the ineffective assistance. If I agree, if I agree that we can destroy records at the close of the case or at a certain point in time, and it comes back on appeal and we have to retry the case, okay. and we call the same experts, and they have no nothing, nothing to review to prepare for their testimony for trial, well, you then, can, we, then you can deal with it at the the next trial. And they'd have to. So I'll, I'll keep it off you. I'll just order it. So you can keep you can keep the stuff, but you got to bring it back from your experts. Prepare the language as it relates to that. Give me some language. Then you don't have to worry about it. You're not providing it. I'm ordering it. Make it easy on you. Okay. So as to number five, if you'll, you guys will do that, provide that to me, and then we'll get that signed. So let's let's look at timing. Uh, the um, 
discovery request? When, when, how long do you think it'll take, well, to, to provide what? Quickly. My victims are indicating one week at. at okay. At, so you want to say uh, you're going to provide something in writing by the end of the week, Mr. LaPella, and they'll have next, the, the next uh, business, next week, close the business on Friday, a week from this Friday. Provide it all to you. That's fine, Judge. I'll we'll have that done this week. Okay. Um, are there any other? Yes. Is there any other potential issues that, that we need to possibly have uh, any other follow-up? I mean, there's always something that... I think we'll know. need a copy of the written, the proposed written statement for the experts to sign. Like, whatever they're proposing, that it says they have to sign a written statement. Well, it depends on what, how, how you guys work that language. So whatever we need I, to do. I think okay. that what's in the statement might matter, too. But, yeah, that's we can sure. issue... Figure that out later, but uh, that might help. I mean, it, uh, if we're going to come to an agreement on it, I think I'd need to know what's in that proposed statement. Unless the court's just going to order it. I'm, I'm not following you. So the, the reference in number five on the protective order is that the defense must first obtain a written statement from the expert. What is that statement? Is that something my office generates, or is that something the state's going to provide us with? It, it'll, it'll be in this order. They're going to look at this and see what they really need okay. for the experts. This this language does um, require that they give an affirmative statement that they're basically in compliance or something with this. But that's what you really need to look at that as to what is really necessary, you know, based upon the unique, you know, the rules and criminal. You just have to really think it through to uh, come up with it. I don't. I don't know if that will be necessary ultimately. So the way you know, if anything needs to be, you know, a written statement or something. He's say something to the effect that, you know, until you get the written statement, you can't access the materials. And then you don't have to. And whenever they want it, they just have to prepare. It's just a statement saying, hey, we'll comply with this. This, this is not, I don't think there's any you know, I mean, real sophisticated language that needs to be in there. But, but that's easy for me to say when you have to actually prepare it. It always is. Anything else that we that we might need to? Judge, just thinking further ahead, I, I'm not sure, and maybe I haven't seen it. Is it. There's not any reciprocal discovery of an expert witness yet, is my understanding. It sounds like there may be one in the near future. Yeah, why I'm don't just, we, uh, are we, is this the last of the discovery? Do we have, a, should we have, a, shouldn't we have a discovery cutoff? We could, Your Honor. June 1, a month from now? Discovery cutoff. I'm just wondering whether we need to have any type of a status. call case management or status at some point, um, maybe June 1. About June 9th on our miscellaneous day in the morning. That's miscellaneous. June 9th in the, in the a.m., those are just short hearings, just 
you guys will surprise me with some big motions that I got to deal with. But Judge, I'm just kind of wanting to. You got a conflict? It looks like I do, but I might be able to find coverage for that. Um, it's just a doc. It's it's a docket day in Santa Rosa County. Okay. But I think I could probably find coverage for that. Okay. Yeah, I just want to get together. If if you know, hopefully this will kind of get some ideas because you know you're really you know this the, the issue of restitution is more than just the issue of restitution because it also impacts potentially as as you raised appropriately so it also impacts uh, ultimate a, a resolution or in in other ways other than just the restitution it's not just restitution actually even that's even if you get over the threshold of the amounts that are required by the the um, the information and the precise statutory language that we have to buy you know to meet so okay very good so I need um, I'll prepare an order on today's hearing. Thank you, Judge. But you all need to finalize get that language on the disclosure. If, if you don't, give me something so I can, so I'll have to finalize. If you guys do finalize, then give me a final order and I'll just sign it. If you guys come up with some Give me a, a Word document with your proposed language. You give me your proposed language. I'll make a ruling on it, and I'll enter it. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Gillespie? I think that's it, Judge. Judge, my list of the of the issues that we're seeking still um, should just be a notice. It's not going to necessarily be responded to by the state. I usually follow as a notice. I think a notice would be sufficient. Notice well, exactly what uh, discovery items. Notice. Okay. Thank you very much. Is the uh, I, I do note that the victims in this case did communicate was made a filing with the court. They did ask to be heard. You all have a right to be heard. No, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Judge. Okay, Mr. Nopes, I know you've got uh, you've got one. Why don't we try yours first, and then? Judge, it's uh, Sean Richard Bennett. Judge, if I may approach. You may. Thank you. Judge, we're here on Sean Richard Bennett, 21 CF 2094 and 21 CF 2098. Um, he's going to enter a no contest plea to each of the counts listed on the plea agreement with the understanding that he'd be adjudicated guilty on all case numbers and counts. And specifically in 21 CF 2094, he'd have $615 in court cost, and he'd receive three years Department of Corrections concurrent with the second case number, 2021 CF 2098. 
Uh, in that case number, I'm referencing the 2094. He would uh, agree that the gun, the firearm, would be forfeited. Uh, and count three is a misdemeanor, so he'd get time served on that count. And then in 21 CF 2098, court cost, I believe, are 548. Three years Department of Corrections, concurrent uh, with the previous case number, and he'd get credit for all time served. There would be an adjudication of guilt. Adjudication of guilt, yes, sir. Okay. Is the state in agreement with that? Yes, sir. And is the defense in agreement on the score sheet? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Bennett, would you please raise your right hand, sir? Do you swear or affirm that the information you're about to provide this court is the truth? Nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, sir. Okay, I just want to make sure, obviously, uh, your attorney has gone over in detail, and I note that what he stated is what's contained on the plea and sentencing agreement. Just want to make sure you've gone over this in detail with your attorney, made sure you had all your legal questions answered. Yes, sir. Okay, and I see you've signed it. Um, so uh, you understand that... Um, these are concurrent sentences, uh, so you'll get three years, Department of Corrections, on each of the, the, the charges except for the paraphernalia, so the, the possession of a firearm, possession of a controlled substance, and then uh, the fleeing, attempting to elude on uh, 2098. All of those will be three years. They'll all be served concurrently. That means they'll be served at the same time and I can stack on top one another. Yes, sir. And you will get credit for all time served. Okay? So you also have a number of fees and costs that are contained in there. And I, I assume we'll, uh, those court costs will just go to collections. Okay, so we'll go to collections on those. Um, I think that's, that's the key part. So uh, you understand that by entering this plea, you're Waving the right to go to trial, you're resolving yes. all these things, you're done. Yes, sir. Okay. Is that what you want to do? Yes, sir. And do you feel like you've gotten good representation on this? Yes, sir. Okay. Nobody threatened, of course, you to get you to enter into this? No, Nobody sir. Nobody promised you anything other than what we just stated? Correct, sir. Okay. Very good. Based upon that, the court will accept your plea and sentence you to the three years Department of Corrections on the three counts uh, and the other issues as relayed by your client, your attorney, and is contained in the plea and sentencing agreement. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Nopes. Okay, so I think other than the back end of our docket with the, with the public defender's office, that's all. We don't have any other ones, do we, here today? Jones was not addressed. What number is that? It would be under Tim Shaw. Under Tim? Yeah, I think we did. You didn't? Okay. Lisa might have addressed. She did. Oh, is there another? Is there a separate? Hold on. He had asked to put it on for today to see if we could work something out. What number are we talking about? I'm sorry, I've lost you. There's Shakti. There we go. I've just got one. Is that Whitfield? I, is there another case that Mr. Shaw has? I only had that single case for him. That's why I'm confused. And Ms. Gleason did uh, inform me what, what was going on. It was continued to the jury review. That's fine, Your Honor. So, we're good? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So, we'll continue then with the... Okay. So, is Austin, I think, is the first one I've got. Which one do you have? First one I have, Your Honor. Is that it? Yep. Okay, Austin. Great. I'm Casey Etheridge for Ms. Austin. And your 
Um, she was here this morning and um, I guess had to run and do something and now she's stuck without a ride back. Um, what are we I'm doing on this case? Court, okay, she's going to plea. I'm asking that the court not put a KPS out for her. Um, she literally can't get a bus back until 445. That's when the bus leaves. Okay. From Fort Walton Beach. You want to bring her back this this Friday is a Thursday yes, when we do that on Please. jury review we'll make an Thank exception you. don't let everybody know I'm being nice about this jury review now okay but we'll we'll do that for Thank a you. plea no I, I understand we we we've tried our best to have try and work with public transportation and yeah. sometimes it's just it is very difficult so okay so Crystal Davis is the next one I have Senator Casey Etheridge for Crystal Davis. We're here in 21 CF 1467. Ms. Davis had some more questions about the um, PTI offer, so I'm just asking to pass this so I can uh, have an appointment with her. Okay. So we'll pass, we'll continue to June 27th. Is that good with the state? Yes, Your Honor. At that time, after the 627, we'll revoke the PTI. Also, because of the incident last week, I need some time to still hear. Okay. hear you know, okay. Well, that yeah. June twenty seventh will give you a little bit of time, but you can communicate with your attorney and Thank you. make sure and work this out. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Well, you can call me. Thank you, Judge. Naji, is it Ibi? Ibi. So, um, Anaji Abi, so this is 22 CF354. So she was, um, here, here's my notes. She was Baker acted, it looks like, on April 25th. And there was a hearing held, and it looks like she's still going to be held until May 11th, at least. So, I mean, as far as we know, she's still being held till then. So. Or let's just continue it to the next cycle. Um, okay, so we'll just come back until June 27th. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Sebastian Jackson. Easy Etheridge for Mr. Jackson. Um, and, Your Honor, this is uh, a case for the... Um, the state actually is not Miss Rivers, um, but we were asking to continue this. We have a resolution worked out. It just needs to be drawn up. It's a, a pretrial intervention. I don't know when she would have it by, but I'm sure the court doesn't want to set for Thursday. So, and he's out of custody, so I don't object to waiting till whenever. You want to just do it on uh, <clears throat> May 26th, our next miscellaneous date in the morning. That's fine. Although I'm afraid, May, May, we've been saying May 26 a lot today. What does our morning look like on May 26th? We'll just. Anyway, we'll continue to May 26th. 26. 26. I'll call you before then. Hmm. Stephen Custer. Casey Etheridge for Mr. Custer, and we're here in 21 CF 321. Oh, over here. Um, uh, and he would like to um, withdraw his previously tendered plea and enter a plea of no contest. Um, and the, the, the sentence is as follows adjudication of guilt, three years of probation. Um, $70 in restitution to Richard Stanton, no contact with the victim, no acts of or threats of violence, a state to reserve for, rest for further restitution, and then the cost of supervision will be waived. May I approach? May. 
Is that the agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. And is the defense on agreement on the score sheet? Yes, Your Honor. Great. Is it Custer? Is that you pronounce your name, sir? Mr. Custer, would you please raise your right hand? You swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Okay. So you heard your attorney state the terms of your plea agreement. Three years probation, costs, or some restitution, et cetera. I did, is that, yes, sir. Is that your understanding of what the plea agreement is? I see that um, I'm looking at the plea and sentencing agreement, and it appears to have your name on the back of it. I assume that's your signature. Is. So have you had a chance to go over this plea and sentencing agreement with your attorney? Make sure you had all of your legal questions answered about this. Do you have any other questions about it? You good? Okay. So you understand that by entering this plea, importantly, you're waiving the right to go to a trial. This is the final resolution of this case. Do you understand that? Okay. So the key thing, there is an adjudication of guilt, three years of probation, and then there's some restitution and, and reserve. The reserve for restitution, you understand that? In other words, that's something that the state's going to have to file. Uh, are we going to... Do we have, usually we put a time limit on that restitution, 120 days, 180, what do we generally put? 120 is fine, Your Honor. Okay, so well, I'm going to ask you to amend that, counsel. Yes, Your Honor. So if the state files something, uh, you, you might agree, you might not, but you'll have a chance to, it'll be done separately. It won't interfere with your plea here today. It won't interfere with your probation. I understand. Okay. So, um... Do you have any other further questions from your attorney? You feel like you've gotten good representation? I was pleased. Okay. Very good. Based upon that, the court will accept your plea and will sentence you to the adjudication of guilt and three years probation along with the restitution and fees, et cetera, that are contained within the plea and sentencing agreement. Okay. Good luck. And one bit of it, I'm only give you one little bit of advice. Stay in good contact with that probation officer. So you're already on probation? Okay. That's, that's so important. It's a simple thing, but, you know, if there's a bump in the road, you want them to be working with you, not working against you. They're working with me. Yeah, they're, they're good. They're, they'll work. They'll walk. They'll, for the most part, people will, will meet you halfway if you'll just, just try and, Walk toward him a little bit. Right, I do. Crystal Acre. Casey Etheridge for Miss Acre, <clears throat> and she would like to, um, I guess, accept the state's offer of pretrial intervention. I think you guys did that with a plea here, right? You may. Thank you. Okay, so Ms. Aker, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. So you're entering into a, a plea agreement basically to uh, participate in pretrial intervention. You sign the actual agreement. Um, just want to make sure you're you're committed to following through with this thing. This is actually a, a very good deal. You get a chance to have your charges actually eliminated, which isn't all that common. Yeah. And so, uh, just you know, I told the gentleman before, you know, stay in good contact. It goes a long way. You know, keep working it. They'll they'll work with you, but you gotta you gotta help yourself. Absolutely. Okay, very good. Well, Thank good luck you. With it. The court will accept the pretrial intervention. The, the probation's got to sign it. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. 
Thank Good you. Luck. Derek, excuse me, Driston Derek. Casey Etheridge for Driston Derek, Your Honor, and we're here in 22 CF 567 and 22 CF 994. He would like to withdraw his previously tendered plea of not guilty and enter a plea of no contest. Um, and he would be sentenced as follows. Um, on all counts, in all cases, concurrent adjudication of guilt, credit for time served, $615 in court costs, $100 cost of prosecution, $150 um, cost of defense, and they would be payable within 120 days or sent to collections. May I approach? You may. Is the state in agreement? Yes, Your Honor, that's on each case. Very good. And is the defense in agreement on the score sheet? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Derrick, would you raise your right hand, sir? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, Your Honor. Obviously, you got a, a pretty, pretty good plea agreement on this. So, you heard your counsel take you your hand out. You heard your counsel describe that plea agreement. Is that your a plea agreement that you've agreed to? I see you've signed the plea and sentencing agreement and it has it on that. Have you been able to go over with your attorney? There is an adjudication of guilt. Credit for time served. You're not going to have to. Uh, you're not going to have to come back or serve time or, or uh, you know, even be on probation. We have a number of uh, charges that will go to collection within 120 days. If you don't have them paid for by then. Do you understand that? I do, Your Honor. But you've had any questions you've had answered from your attorney on that? Okay. Very good. Based upon that, the court will accept your plea, and uh, on all counts, we'll sentence you to uh, credit for time served and adjudication of guilt with the fees and costs that are contained. Don't come back to court with short pants. I don't wear long pants to court. <laughs> okay. Okay, anything else, ladies and gentlemen? No, Your Honor. Mr. Snell has formally abandoned you, right? He has. Okay. He now works for the State Attorney's Office. Ooh. Today, I believe. Over the dark side. <laughs> okay. Steve, thank you. You uh, manage that. Very well with you, so I appreciate you had him. Not, it's not, not easy, I mean, trying to get him from here to there to there. And it went very smoothly. Okay. Yeah. I heard a rumor <laughs> that Mr. Dar We have to file it with the court, that actual paper. He's the paper. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> We're just together now. You can just set up. You're welcome. You have a good day. Proud for what she's done. She's... I figured he would have her as a dog.